The worlds of the universe lie separated by the vastness of space, each alone and dependent upon its own resources. In the past, a greater community of worlds has existed, promoting a greater good for all of its members and for all those who have interacted with it. The time has now come to reestablish that greater community on the foundations of the past in order to promote safe travel among the stars, the exploration of worlds circling those stars, the pursuit of knowledge, mutually profitable trade and commerce, the active exchange of information and technology, the individual pursuit of personal betterment, and the collective pursuit of community good. We hereby today reestablish the grand empire of the stars. The preamble to the warrant of restoration decreed by Cleon Zenostu, otherwise known as Cleon the First or Cleon the Great. Hello everyone and welcome to Vorpal Tales. We are your one-stop shop for all things TTRPG. We present both awesome adventures, terrifying tales, and all game types in between. Tonight, we will be playing the epic spacefaring adventure game Traveler from Mongoose Publishing. Traveler is a game of making your way in a harsh and unforgiving universe. While the Imperium protects trade lanes and hubs of capital, most worlds are nothing more than feudal war zones as local lords fight for power and money. If the dangers of space travel and hostile planets don't kill you, then your outstanding debts just might. The goods of the Imperium must not be interrupted and bill collectors often come with guns and military training because this is the cost of commerce. Joining me tonight are a group of amazing role players just trying to eke out a living in the universe and stay one step ahead of their creditors. Players, introduce yourselves for the people at home. Let them know your name, where they can find you online. And since we have no idea who we are playing, tell everyone a science fiction trope you love. Hey, everybody. I'm Ambrose. My pronouns are he or they. You can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling because it's me, Am Traveler. You can find me on Etsy at Thornkind and uh, let's see, favorite trope. Um, what you love doesn't have to be your favorite. Uh, so, um, brain brain is not fully together. Uh, please example. Brain in a jar. Ray guns and bubble helmets. <laughs> oh, Stargate. Just Stargate. The whole trope of Stargate. All of it. All of it. Perfect. So, so you like holy things? Got it. Oh my. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Devin. You can see me better now. I am online at Sort of Sullied, and uh, tonight I am playing something that I'm going to make up off the top of my head. Uh, and uh, one of my favorite tropes is how every single ship always has some form of hyperdrive, faster than light, way to zoom off, even though it's like a two person cruiser. Fuck it, you still have hyperdrive because they're tiny. Hi everyone, um, is my mic on? Yes. My name is Keems and you can find me on the interwebs at It's Me Keems. Um, my favorite space trope probably started back when I like many, many years ago when Power Rangers Lost in Space first came out. Um, and I love the idea of being like lost in space and needing to find your way back. Um, and more recently, if you guys have seen uh, Love, Death, and Robots and The Aquila Rift, one of my favorite episodes. Super good. And it's me. I am John, otherwise known as J3Billion. Uh, and that was an excellent, excellent uh, 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 trope. 
Um, I guess mine would be uh, the fact that telecommunications is always instant. When right now our current our current just technology at this moment has us traveling at the edge of our solar system. It takes information a day to get here and then another day to get back. But somehow across galaxies, we always have just instant transmissions. All right. Hello, my name is Rachel. You can find me at Stolen Fires pretty much everywhere on the internet. Uh, and I'm going to be playing a character defined by the dice rolls tonight. Uh, and I think my favorite science fiction fact is uh, for a long time, I seriously and sincerely thought that the aliens guy was in Centauri cosplay. My, my other science fiction uh, trope is that one time they locked those two mortal enemies in an elevator. Hello, I'm Dave, aka Twin Dead Tweets on the Bird app, and tonight I don't know who I'm playing it, but I am trying to die during character creation because uh, I heard it was a thing, and I want to see if I can do it. Uh, my favorite, not I, I, one of my favorite science fiction tropes, well, science fiction things, I would say, is I like the idea of the replicator. I know it's like almost entirely impossible, but it's cool sci-fi tech. And I also, I also have a soft spot for like the old, like old Trek and campy like nineteen fifties, like sci fi stuff like Steve mentioned with the bubble helmets and ray guns kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I, I I do appreciate how thanks to Will Wheaton, I was able to get my COVID vaccine early. Because I, I uh, was not in any of the qualifying groups, but then he posted to Facebook, Hey, they're just doing walk-ins in Bakersfield, which is like a 90-minute drive away. Nice. Uh, and so uh, me and Bob made the Bakersfield vaccine run the next day. <laughs> Thank I you, thought maybe, Yeah, I thought yes. maybe Will Wheaton just had vaccines and was... Like, hey, you want a vaccine? <laughs> hey, you want a vaccine? Hey, 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 hey. Just Come like on. stabbing people. In the back in the back of my car, I got I got I got a couple of vaccines back there. That's yes. how that's how you kidnap adults. Hey, I got vaccines in the back of this van. Uh, hey, uh, you got some of them vaccines. <laughs> got some, got some vaccines. I got some I got some bootleg vaccines. Ooh, we don't want the bootleg ones. <laughs> of bootleg um, vaccines, actually, that leads us into uh, something that could possibly happen during character creation. So, bootleg vaccines? Yes, actually. Sweet. <laughs> um, <laughs> this game has everything. It's awesome. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, by the way, my name is Steve. My pronouns are he, him. You can find me online at Voodoo Arcade all over the internet. I will be your referee for this evening. And one of my favorite things in science fiction, as mentioned, is in fact bubble helmets and ray guns and old uh, science fiction where the resolution is just a bunch of people standing around talking. Um, I love boring sci-fi, which may or may not be a good sign for this game. Who knows? Because technically you can play this game just standing around talking. <laughs> you could literally just be merchants that never get into fights and you just kind of sail around making deals and being like, I'll give you two crates of oranges for that cow. You know? <laughs> okay, I, I'm for just. For the space gonna... cow? For the space cow. <laughs> You yeah, know, I, I actually milk. would assume that oranges would be a luxury goods in space. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> well, I mean, I think it would be mixed between a luxury good and just a requirement by somehow dehydrating it for the vitamin C. Mm. Oh, because oh. You don't want space scurvy. <laughs> I literally was about space to say, I can't wait for the first case of I mean... space scurvy in this game. Yeah. Can, can space we... scurvy is a real thing steal the tropes from our flag means death when that happens oh my god <laughs> how do i we're, put my teeth back in <laughs> we're just we're just we're just we're just oh our god. flag means death but in space 
I still okay. have not watched that show. That, that sounds incredible. Me either. Dibs on his right. <laughs> No idea what we're talking about right now. Well, before we get too further into our spaceship means death, um, Vorpal Tales can be found on Twitter, Instagram, and all over the web at Vorpal Tales. If you like the stories we tell, please consider checking out and subscribing to our Patreon. Any level of support is greatly appreciated. If you want to interact with our travelers, not survivors, that is a different game. I mean, depending on how we make it to character creation. True. Actually, that is true. If you want to interact with uh, me or our travelers, join our Discord. Uh, take part in an amazing, supportive, and inclusive online community. Uh, we would not be able to survive the perils of the charted worlds without our sponsors. First is Kiyu Empire, a small company making original dice and products for your favorite RPGs and card games. Use code VORPALTALES at QUEMPIRE.COM for 10% off. Hit Point Press, known for their various reference cards, but also for creating the Humblewood and Hecna campaign settings. Visit VORPALTALES.COM, click on our affiliate link, and anything you purchase, a portion benefits the show. Also, Alchemy RPG. Alchemy is a virtual tabletop focused on creating an immersive cinematic experience everywhere you interact with tabletop role-playing games. Uh, playing a game, creating a world, streaming and watching live games, and discovering new content. Go check them out at alchemyrpg.com. Gem, Hammer, and Sons, an RPG supplement store that has everything from decks of wonder to decks of illusion to dice. Uh, here too, you can use discount code VORPALTALES for 10% off. Also, Odd Duck Dice. Get yourself some handmade resin dice. These lovely dice will be your portal into the adventure of your choice. Available on the Odd Duck Dice Etsy store. They are quite lovely, one might say. They're pretty. But looking for something other than plastic dice? Want to be more than a dice goblin? Well, now you can change that up by picking up a set of Norse Foundry metal dice and roll with the authority of a god of thunder. Visit our partner, norsefoundry.com, and use the code VORPALDIE, VORPALDIE, that's an ominous code, to get 10% off your entire purchase and let everything from your battle axe attack to your insanity roll be punctuated with that satisfactory thunk. Also, we will be listening to the music from the incredible Pirates of Drenax official soundtrack available for purchase from Mongoose Publishing. Check it out, it's awesome. While we are not playing Pirates of Drenax, we will be playing in that part of the charted space. Okay, so with that said, what's Traveler? It's every science fiction trope you've heard smashed together in a really cool, expansive, deep world. Um, I am not going to pretend or try to go through Traveler lore right now because there is just too damn much. If you want to get lost in sci-fi lore and deep worlds, you know, about 11,000 deep worlds, um, this is your game. Check it out. Uh, we will be using the Traveler Core Rulebook updated for 2022 from Mongoose Publishing. There are many editions and versions of Traveler. It's been around for a very, very long time, but we'll be using the Mongoose one updated for uh, the year that we currently occupy at the time of this recording. So, uh, long and short of Traveler, we have an Imperium. Um, the Imperium is the strongest kind of like most expansive thing in uh, what's called the charted worlds. And that is just all known space. <laughs> Um, other factions and entities exist, and we can go into those as we cover them, but for the most part, the Imperium is what you need to know. There's one other thing, though, there is, in the war that we're going to occupy, um, that is the Aslan Hyret. Um, they are a race of lion people um, who kind of challenge the borders of the Imperium, uh, but Aslans um, live peacefully you know in the imperium that they choose to come over um so you can you know they're actually one of the playable uh, alien races there are only two available in the core book and for ease of us all getting the traveler for the first time we're going to stick to the core book as much as possible for right now um 
So, and we'll go over those uh, those other alien possibilities. So, the Imperium and the Asmund Hirat um, will be kind of our two primary factions that, where we exist. Um, as mentioned, there are a ton more. Um, so, uh, what is the Imperium? The Imperium is a feudal space system, essentially. There is one emperor uh, that oversees everything. For the most part, the, uh, the Imperium has a very short list of high laws that everyone inside the Imperium follows. And it's essentially laws that promote self-governance on each world, but that everyone must sort of protect and promote interstellar trade. The bottom line of the Imperium is the bottom line. Uh, the Imperium is out to protect commerce and trade lines and capital uh, and hubs of capital, as mentioned in the opening. Um, where are you going to find Imperium troops and ships? Patrolling the trade lanes and patrolling the spaceports where uh, travelers like yourself stop over. When you land on a planet, unless it has a really, really big trade hub planet side, you are probably going to be working with, uh, alongside or against local militia and local guards by whoever happens to run that planet. Whenever you land on a planet, it's that planet's laws. And unless that law directly goes against high law, they can kind of do whatever it is that they want. Um, so it's kind of feudal, kind of like a confederation, you know, things like that. Um, that's the idea here. So, um, we will be playing in the Trojan Reach. What is the Trojan Reach, you might ask? I have a wonderful little note here that I do not have up on my screen. Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Okay. <clears throat> the Trojan Reach is a border sector with small independent nations comprised of a few worlds who have banded together to form partners in defense, trade, and commerce. In this sector, one can travel from the Imperium through these small independent states to the Aslan Hyrant. The Trojan Reaches are a vibrant area of cross-cultural exchange, linguistic interplay, and interstellar trade. Many of the region's societies and civilizations are young ones, just a millennia or two. But on a different level, some are very ancient and enduring civilizations that can be found here. The interplay between these two provides a great sense of life to the region. So it is a region of extremes. You, on, it, is a, it is the border section between both the Imperium and the Oslans. So you have sort of the cultural, um, the cultures of both kind of pressing up against this area. You have extremely young worlds, um, culturally speaking, and extremely old ones, culturally speaking, who kind of clash against each other. Um, and because these are small, independent worlds, there's a couple of, um, you know, worlds that will kind of band together. And like, it'll be like a three world sort of like, you know, its own sort of kind of allegiance because um, they are neither Imperium or Hyrat. Um, they're kind of existing in the middle. So while even in the Imperium, worlds are kind of their own thing, out here in the Trojan Reach, it's even less structured. This is where pirates live. This is where um, warlords and people who want to really push um, and take over another planet by violence, this is the place to do it because there's very little Imperium presence here except at the border itself. So there is a big chance for opportunity um, if you are willing to go out there and take it, but everyone else is trying to as well. So it is a dangerous place, but a place of great adventure. Okay. Can we right. be space pirates? Yar. Sweet. Can we fly around in a ship like in Thundercats? They're space pirates? Like an actual pirate ship? But you can see pirates? what ship you guys get in character creation, if any. You might not even own a ship. Can I, that to... just means we'll have to steal one. Flying, <laughs> flying Winnebago? Rental surfaces. Yes. Exactly. All right. 
We so, rented this year boat and then we took it for our own. All right. So, with all of that said, are there any? Devin, Devin, I'm looking in chat over here. Come on, man, get it together. Um. So, uh, with that said, are there any immediate questions to jump out of mind? I know that was both a lot of information and almost no information at the same time. Um. But any questions immediately jumping out? at this time. Can I have a pony? I don't know. We'll have to see how your character creation goes. <laughs> I will buy you a pony when we get Rachel when I get what enough. Rachel wants. <laughs> I'll buy you a pony when I get enough of whatever uh passes for money is acquired. Those, those would just be called credits. Okay. We're and not yes, going crazy. When we get enough credits, I'll buy you a pony. Yeah. I buy a pony when you can just take one for free. Oh no, I I know where this is going. <laughs> uh, okay, well, no. So, so, so okay. hear me out. Yes. We land in the okay. middle of the night on yes. the horse farm. Steal all the horses. Look, some people call what me a space cowboy. What are we going to do with horses in space? Horses what aren't in we gonna do in space. Firefly had cows in space. Yeah, yeah I mean, they landed on a planet. It was like a Western world. They had cows and horses. Yeah. All right. Here's the plan. All you have to do is develop a horse-compatible vac suit, and then you could ride the horse in space. What if we so... just replace... And then, no, no, yes. then I get to do horse space opera. But what if we just add a some sort of cybernetic component to the horse to allow it to have like an air tank inside that it could use as a reserve of oxygen. Steve's well, going to reach for the internet and murder me. Explosive decompression. So yeah. You're thinking too real too unless real. space opera slash fantasy. Okay, so we give it an injection of nanobots. Bam. There you go. Amazing. Perfect. Game zero and we're already tiring out the DM. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Green, can we have nanobots for our horses in space? <laughs> I don't know. We'll have to see how character creation goes. This thing tells me I can. Wow. All right. So what do we do first? <laughs> All right. Is that thing written thing, in crown on your character sheet? The first thing that you need to do. Maybe. Um, and here's a question I want to go ahead and ask. Technically, this comes later in character creation, but I just want to get a gauge on how everyone feels. Um, if you look on page 53 of the book, um, there is two alien groups that you can take part, or that you can be, uh, that you can be in the game. The first one is, of course, the Aslan, um, which we are going to be on their border, uh, in the Trojan Reach, so they'll be fairly present. Um, those are, the Aslan are the youngest of the great powers. They are an expansionist species of feuding clans and predatory warriors eager to seize all the universe has to offer. They are descended from four-limbed carnivores and pouncers, which uh, was originally near the top of the food chain in the forest of their home world. They are essentially cat lion people. Um, and again, you can see them um, on page 53 if uh, you have the book. Uh, so that is an option available to you. They get... Um, Claws and heightened senses, or you can be, I don't know how to say this word. Varger. 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 Space puppy. They space are space doggos. Space doggos, space wolves, space. Wait, space, space I can legit space be a space wolf? Yes. Can I have power armor and a chainsword? If you get the rules necessary to have big, heavy armor. Nice. Then I can be a space wolf. What would it be, space doggo? Okay. Well, let's take a look here. All right. The Vardiger are the only major race to have been uplifted by the ancients. That's a whole sentence. Don't worry about it. Um, they are very proud of that fact. They are typically seen by other species as aggressive pirates and scavengers, but the Vardiger actually have a diverse culture that is deeply rooted in their pack mentality and the desire for companionship, charisma, and loyalty. Their constant struggle for charisma and leadership results in a culture fueled by conflict and change. So they kind of gravitate towards charismatic, strong leaders 
in hopes of uh, growing the pack. Uh, they are descended from carnivore chasers, uh, genetically engineered by the ancients 300,000 ish years ago. Um, so on and so forth. Uh, they're tall. They look like dogs. They are on page 54. What are their traits? They have a bite. They have heightened senses, but they are weaker and less um, tough than uh, humans and uh, the Aslan. So, you, so if you would like to be either one of those, now would kind of be the time. I think I will be a human. Okay. Ambers, space, space puppy, space kitty, or space human. Space demon. No. Space human. Oh, I was very excited for a second there. Um, space doggo. Space doggo. All right. So we'll keep that in mind for you going forward. You will take a at the end of character creation. It would take a negative to your strength and endurance, but you're going to get a bonus to your dex. We'll cover that later. All right, just keep that in mind. Um, anyone else wanting to play an Aslan or a Vardiger? Did anyone say my my um, sound cut out for a bit? Did anyone already say they're playing an Aslan? Nope, no one has called one. You know what? I will play an Aslan this game. OK, perfect. Um, I'm considering an Aslan, but I'm not sure yet. I will play a space human. Space human? Okay. Yeah. Oh, much different than a regular, regular human. human. <clears throat> yeah, so I'm different than John. Absolutely. All right. Um, at the end of character creation, when we put your extra modifiers in, uh, Keems, you'll get a plus two to strength, but a negative two to dex as Aslan's current um, evolution has made them stronger as opposed to agile. Is it okay that I'm undecided at this particular moment? Yeah, we're... Okay. Yeah, it's not a big deal. And if anyone wants to change or do anything at the end, like I said, technically this comes at the end of character creation. I just wanted to get that out there before um, we went too much further. Uh, <laughs> Rachel is a human. Devin, you're going with human? Space human. Space human. John, space human? No, John's a regular human. No, I'm just a regular human. Regular human. Okay, perfect. All right. To all of those watching at home, Traveler has a very in-depth and very interesting character creation system. I will let you know right now, we will probably not be playing this evening. This is going to be very heavy in character creation. So sit back, grab yourself a snack, and get ready for an hour, another two and a half hours of character creation. We got a lot of players to get through and a lot of people's lives to live. So here we go. Starting on page nine is going to be um, your start of character creation. First thing that you have to do is you have to roll your characteristics. Is anyone opting out of rolling your characteristics straight down and wanting to move them around? Or are we all wanting to go ahead and play that way? Hard mode, hard mode. Hard mode. Hard mode. Hard mode for me. Dave? I prefer to roll and adjust, but I'm okay with hard mode if that's with everybody else. If everybody else wants that that's fine as as we mentioned if it's going to cause you frustration or lose fun in the game you are no, it, won't, to... it won't cause me frustration john are you comfortable with hard mode I rules mean, i mean i mean i feel like there's just so much peer pressure right now for hard mode so i feel like we're just doing hard mode okay well if it is I an mean... issue I'm playing hard mode because I like to suffer, but that has no bearing on what <laughs> brings you joy. Exactly. I'm playing hard mode because I'm going to roll a two. It's amazing. I want to use. All right. First thing you got to do, roll your characteristics. So I would like everyone to please roll 2d6. Whatever total you get there is your strength. 12. No, I'm kidding. We put that in rating. 
Um, let me look at the character sheet here. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna sneak a peek at Ambrose's character sheet. Um, All right, Rosie Dice don't fail me now. Yes, it's gonna okay. go under the rating section. All right. Okay. Uh, duck dice go. Oh. And it should auto update your modifier as well. Go for our duck dice. All right. Um, how do the modifiers increase? Is it like every two you get plus one modifier or? Um, that is on page nine. So a zero is a negative three. A one or a two, three, four, six, nine, ten, eleven. It, it, it starts to vary as you get higher up. Um, no, no, My no, endurance it's every is three. A two. So you're in, oh, hold on, we'll get there. Hold on. Um, basically one or a two is a negative two modifier. A three or five, three through five is a negative one modifier. Six through eight is a zero modifier. Nine through 11 plus one, 12 through 14 plus two, 15 or higher plus three. Got it. Okay, so I have be... a very quick question. Yes. Does intellect or dexterity come after strength in the roll order? Uh, it's uh, strength, dex, endurance, intellect, education, society. Thank you. Yes. Which oh. is why I have a two in endurance, a three in int, a six in education, and a hold five in society. On. Hold on, I'm going to ask you for your totals when we all catch up. Give me a second. I have, I have a right. question. Yes, John? The What we roll is going to be considered our rating. Yes. And then we calculate our mod from there. The, the sheet okay. should calculate your modifier for I got it. I got you. I'm on the same page. So we're doing rolling intellect now. Well, no, it's strength and then dex and okay, then endurance. Okay. So, so you're going to do the top line on. first and then the second line. Right. So have we rolled dex yet? Sorry. So if you have not, so if you have your strength, now go ahead yes. and roll your dex if you've not done so. All right. Man, I'm kind of a himbo. And you're just going to do that same thing all the way down. It goes strength, dex, endurance, intellect, okay. education, society. You just want to roll all of yours out, and then we will go around and we will share all of our characteristics. I know Devin is ready. We'll wait. we'll wait for Ambrose. Take these first. So I rolled really well. Thank you, I've Duck Dice. Oof. Is all I have to say. Oof, no. <laughs> all right. I see Ambrose has finished his characteristics. So Ambrose, why don't you go ahead and give me a rundown of your stats? Uh, so got an eight in strength, six in dex, seven endurance, seven intellect. 10 education and nine in social. Hey, that means that at this moment in time, your only modifiers are a plus one in education and a plus one in social. I love this game. All right, who's next, Devin, right? Yeah, so I have a, a seven in strength with a zero modifier, a, a nine in dex with a plus one modifier, a two in endurance with negative two, a three in intelligence with a negative one, a six in education with a plus zero, and a five in social with a minus one. Rad. I'm gonna live. Who I'm are? gonna live. <laughs> um, Akima, I believe, is next. Yeah, so with the racial stat to the racial boost that I got, um, I got a 10 in strength with a plus one modifier. Um, a eight in dex with a plus zero modifier, 12 in um, endurance with a plus two, eight with plus zero for intellect, for education, a four with a negative one, and social is six with a zero. Okay. Awesome. 
uh, Ambrose, if you want to go ahead and change your with your racial bonuses as well, you can uh, what do that. Were they, again? they were. Where are you, space buttons? Space bumper. And negative two to strength. Oof. Brings it down to six. Okay. A plus one to dexterity. Mm, brings it up to seven. A negative one to endurance. Brings it down to six. Okay. All right. I would like to know how puppers have high dex, low endurance. Because they're genetic you, modifications. You get the, you get the zoomies and you gotta take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, humans are persistence predators. Wolves are not. It's true. All right. After Akima goes, John. John, how'd you how'd you end up rolling? Uh, five, seven, five, seven, seven, three. Five, seven, five, seven, seven, three. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I am aggressively three. average. Three. <laughs> that is, so here's the thing. That is normal for Traveler because you tend to roll average. Um, however, uh, that three in society, man, you are, you're, I don't think you're going to be a noble, unfortunately. You the dice have to say about that. <laughs> uh, Rachel. All right. So I got a strength of eight, a dexterity of 11, an endurance of four, <laughs> an intellect of seven, an education of three, and a social of 10. So I'm like a glass cannon himbo. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. And finally, Dave. Who is fucking up the bell curve for the class, I think, with uh, my high rolls. God damn it. Sorry, I just opened up a window that I didn't want to open. Ah! All right, so I have a 12, 11, 10, 10, 9, 11. Jesus. What the fuck? I roll really well for character creation. We it's comment. because you, it's a your, bonus. Your dice give you yeah, the well, bonus. Rosie bonus. I was gonna say, dice. we're gonna talk to Rosie okay. about these weighted dice she's giving you. Yeah. I have I have questions. Look, first you question have to pay is, extra for those, okay? <laughs> My first question is, which god of RNG did you pray to? I don't uh, know. Rosie. Ever okay. since I started, no, ever since I started playing TTRPGs back when I was like 13. I've always had good ability with stats. I, I'm side messaging Rosie that I want my dream dice to be weighted like yours. It won't, however, prevent me from rolling shitty during the game. Just ask Rachel, because my stats in her COC game were very good, and I rolled shit all the time. I mean... Steve has made some pretty epic rolls uh, in Call of Cthulhu, like when he got like a 20 power, which correlates to a 20 sanity score. He's just starting great. off insane. Ah! Yeah, that character's dead now. <laughs> Spoilers! And it's Ambrose's fault. All right, traveling to the house. the road oh, getting him out it. of the train. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Lupin Vendetta said. Lupin yeah, Vendetta true. just asked me to roll drive. And now. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's <laughs> see you roll drive. I don't trust you to roll drive. Yeah, I will not be our pilot. Hopefully. I, I have. Oh, a I will be. I mean, I'll be the pilot. Pi I have great stats for that. Pilots need to be highly educated, right? Three's good, right? Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely. right. You beat me. You you beat me hands down. Yes, and that is all they need. There's no practical experience needed whatsoever to be a pilot. Hey, all right. I watched Galaxy Quest. So, Dave. Yes. Mm, we'll talk about that later. Okay. All right. That makes me concerned. No, no big deal. All right, 
So well, the D the DM said it was no big deal. Obviously, no big deal. So, next, Fine. we're going to get your background skill. Before you embark on your careers, you receive a number of background skills equal to your education dice modifier. So whatever your modifier number is, uh, plus three. If you have a negative, Ooh. that's yeah. Okay, so, see, <laughs> IRL Dave just went, huh? <laughs> So, yeah. What is your education modifier? One. So you get four background skills. Okay. All right. Now, this is on page nine. Um, they are specific skills that you can take. Um, so if you have the PDF open, if you have the book, I would look to page nine. I'm um, on page nine. So that chart there um, is what you can take as a background skill. So I just hit add on the skills tab and just enter the name? Correct. So go over okay. to the skills tab um, and you're going to be able to do three plus your education modifier. Um, and remember, um, you start untrained. So you are taking the skill from untrained to plus zero. Um, that is uh, that's what you can do. You cannot take it to plus one. That option is not available. It has to be three different skills at plus zero. Okay, quick question. Is flyer like piloting or is it like I'm good with flying with like wings or like uh, it's pilots? It's the pilot skill. It's, it's the pilot skill. Okay, cool. I won't yeah. be taking it. I was just curious because sure. as we said, the aforementioned me trying to drive stuff. I can use um, a yes. list of the skills Let since I can't have it. I'll them. send them to you. Yeah, I, I got you. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, because for, for those of you not it. in the know, my computer is being a butt. May I screenshot? Put it out this is hard because I don't even know what my background, like I don't know what my character is yet. So picking background skills makes it hard. Like if I take Seafair, I'm some sort of sailor, I guess. Well, it seems like these are the skills that we have at the age of 18. Yeah, that is correct. So, yeah, you were 100% correct. At I'm a young 18-year-old who flew, I bullseyed uh, womp mice in my T12 uh, Cosmos Hopper. Hmm. So just like all of us at the age of 18, we have barely any skills and are being asked to decide what it is we're going to do with our lives. I have no idea at age 46. Thank you very much. <laughs> alone at 18. I uh, I want to be a burden on society. <laughs> Oof. Um, I am thinking of going with animals and space dog oh, mechanic because yeah. I can go fetch tools. Uh, science because science and survival because space doggo. I was like survival because space doggo. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, anybody, mm -hmm. anybody mind with me being the flyer? No, I'm thinking I might have grown up in space, so like I might take vac suit. Yes, please. Only have one person who can fly a ship. And athletics. Yeah. I mean, I might take flyer at zero, but we'll see. No. I think hey. I might take flyer as well. <laughs> it's the finger towers of doom. We talked about this. Yes, yes please be a group of nothing but pilots. Okay, wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll go with flyer, medic, and vex to it. I'm sure I'll live long enough to use any of those skills. Absolutely. Um. Ambrose. What characteristic for each of these? Because it's asking for that on the sheet. Uh, we will cover that a little bit later. Oh, okay. uh, I decided not to take flyer. I uh, have athletics, carouse, electronics, and vac suit. So I decided to go with carouse and streetwise. Like two skills. You oh all gosh. saying big words. What? Okay. <laughs> I mean, you I... heard me. It's big words. I know you're not actually talking to me. It's okay. 
I mean, this is why my education is so shitty. Because I was partying all the time. I love yeah, it. that makes sense. Okay. Was clearly well, a cry we, don't, for help. we don't know that Carouse. yet. Only what is carouse? Because so... I'm an un unintelligible idiot. Carouse? Carouse, carouse is it's your party skill, to... man. Yeah, your ability to move oh, throughout okay. a party or like a social event. Glad like... handing and small talking and, you know. yeah corrals like in some games can also be used for things like you need like you know where to go to get things yeah i, I think oh. it's more it's more like your ability to move in and out of groups of people your, your yeah. ability to schmooze people yeah 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 schmooze in schmooze out maybe i've got a good social maybe i should take something like that can i don't get a don't think that way just just whatever comes to your mind yeah, I'm just saying I grew up in space and, like, my parents were mechanics. I grew up on a big ship and I was a little bit lazy. So I liked to, like, I picked up some skills, but, you know, I also like to, to carouse and hang out and just be a shiftless layabout. If you try to optimize your character at this point in character <laughs> creation, you are going to be dramatically disappointed. <laughs> Oh dear. Uh, I'm just I'm just gonna say that my character spent most of the time already in space because with okay. a two if uh endurance, yeah. Sure. I totally know how to deal with gravity. Are we so is it canon that we've already been like out in space now? No. And... Nope. You uh... are eighteen years old at this moment. You could have spent all eighteen years of that on a planet, you could have spent it all on a ship, you could have spent it on an asteroid, you could have spent know it what? in a bunker. You know, on a it, horse picking farm. these picking these skills without actually knowing what we're going to end up with feels all very like darts on a board right now. So I am just going to pick seafarer and profession. Don't know what profession is, but profession. Um, you know what? And let's do it. Throw an art, art profession, and seafarer. There we go. Okay, perfect. Uh, that. Rachel, you I have a question. Have, yes. Uh, should we hit the little button to toggle it trained or not? Um, yes, because once you move it to the plus zero, you are trained. Okay. Well, so it says it's... skill level zero, but my total ends up being negative. That's oh, that's because your strength. On... Yeah, because your strength whatever is your negative. modifier is. Actually, I thought um... you're... like, do you have all your characteristics set to strength still? No, you. No. So you want to? Okay. So. Okay. I, I see. I, okay, I see how this sheet is working. For this, what we're doing right now, all you want to do is click trained from the red X to the check mark. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. That and was that my question. will bring you. Yep. And that will bring you to zero, which okay, is nice. technically the first level of a skill. I know okay. that's weird. It's just yeah. So, your skill level right now should be zero, but you should be trained in the in the things that you picked. Okay. And yes. then, yeah. Like, what would a characteristic for for seafarer be? We'll 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 fix all the characteristics a little bit later. Um, instead of going through each one as we pick, we'll just do a kind of big blanket. You know, one. I mean, it it sense. did auto populate when I clicked mine. Yeah, just for mine, it just gives me baseline strength all the way down. I guess one step at a time, right? Yeah. Um, for me, I'm slowly coming up with the backstory as this goes, and I think I'm going to go with Flyer and Admin. Okay. All right. Ambrose, you have your four, and I've checked the trained button for you, so you are good on your Thank skills. You. You're welcome. Uh, Kima looks good. Dave skills are good. Devin the best. Oh, that's because of your okay, got it. Okay. That will change. And Rachel is good. Perfect. Oh, so Rachel did a different thing. Perfect. Okay. <gasps> Rachel, how dare you? Oh, no, her... I did what I was supposed to do. Yes. 
Um, so, all right, very quickly. If uh, you pull up your character sheet and you look at the skills tab, yep. there is a little green power button yep. next to you. Select which skills to show. If you click that, it will drop down all of the skills for you, and you can click them, and it will auto fill in your skills. Oh, um, okay, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. what I meant by it'll auto populate. Yeah. So. So how do we get rid of the ones that we added manually? Oh, I see it. Never mind. Yeah. I figured yeah. it out. All right. See. Ya. Yeah, I do not see a way to remove the other ones. Oh wait. Uh, you hit modify do... on the bottom right, and then you get yeah. rid of. Yeah. It's not letting me do that. Oh well, I'm stuck. Sorry, everybody at home. We are using this character sheet for the first time. It is a really cool character sheet in Roll20. Um, has a lot of features. It's just with all, every new sheet comes some growing pains. Oh um, my God. So there oh. you go. Excellent. All right. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you are good on your skills for now, and we're going to move on to the next thing. OK, ready, ready. great. Let's go ahead and move on to the next thing. At this point, you are 18 years old and ready to take on the universe. Now, where did you come from? Well, wild knowledge of a trip. Yes. You know what happens to doggos at 18? You're a oh, space doggo. Go to you're a space doggo. You're uplifted. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Okay, thank yeah, you. You're a space doggo. You're fine. This monkeys space, only live in the wild for like 20 Jeez. years. I mean, humans, before her technology, I'm assuming it was just about 20 years, too. Now, oh, never mind. I'm not going to make a joke about that. Okay, so. How technology um, is the fall of mankind? Yeah, sure it is. While yeah, knowledge of the Traveler's homeworld is not necessary, it's a nice tool to start shaping the character from the outset. Background skills can be picked up to help suggest the kind of world the Traveler grew up on. For example, a Traveler coming from a naturalistic agricultural world may have animals, seafarer, and survival skills, whereas one whose childhood was spent in an asteroid belt would likely have fax suit, electronics, and flyer, representing life in space surrounded by high technology. This is by no means compulsory, uh, but you may find the traveler you create starts to come alive much faster, so we don't have a big grasp necessarily on each individual world in this universe, because there's a trillion of them and we're relatively new. So you have to pick where you come from yet. If you do some investigation into the lore and you find one that works for you, awesome. But right now, we're going to skip over the where did you come from. It doesn't change anything mechanically, so we're not missing out on anything. Uh, I've, I've got my friend Crad Regnar in chat right now. Uh, oh. He's waiting out the one hour timer because uh, he just okay. followed us. Uh, this is his favorite game, so... Oh, shit. Crad Regnar, <laughs> tell me where I should be from. All right, let me go ahead and set up straight and take this serious. Okay, so. <clears throat> Next, as we scroll down to page 11, come your careers. Now you're gonna start engaging in one or more career terms, representing your experience and adventures before the start of our campaign. Each career term lasts for four years. Even if a traveler um, fails any particular role in this, it still eats up four years of your life. <laughs> okay? So, yes, you can fail at a career, getting no bonuses or benefits from that time. <laughs> it still wastes four years of your life, much like most of my jobs in my 20s. I did it, I did it in our trial run of how to make Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so, uh, Dave, I would recommend that you read the blue box entitled Social Standing and Nobility. I, I did read that, actually. So if that is of interest to you, you have a high social, you may or may not have the ability to become a noble. Well, I'll, I, I'll think about it. I hadn't really... Okay. Maybe. I mean, all right. Yeah. All right. Okay, so thinking about your character, <clears throat> thinking about your 
uh, ideas of, you know, what your stats look like. I have a question for each of you. You're 18. Are you going to try to get an education or are you going to try to get a job? Job. All right. So we'll start with Ambrose and we'll go through the normal talking order. Ambrose, would you like to attempt, attempt a pre-career education or are you looking for a job? Now, before everyone answers, I do have a quick clarification. You may attempt to go to school, either a university or the military academy within the first three terms of character creation. However, each term you wait incurs a negative one dice modifier when applying. <laughs> okay? So if you wanted to get a job for four years, get some experience, and try to go back to school, you can, but you would be taking a negative one to that role. Okay? After three terms, you cannot go to school. You're out. You're too old. Get out of here. All right. So with that having been said, this is term one. We are officially in term one. You're 18 and you're about to go out into the world. Term one. Ambrose, would you like to attempt to go to university or the military academy, or would you like to try to find a job? Well, the best doggos go to dog school. That's not even remotely true. <laughs> My dog's great. Send them to damn school. Mine are hellions. It's probably because we didn't send them to school. <laughs> um, university for this pupper. University for the pupper. Okay. Um, I'm sure it'll be a positive situation. Nope. Cut that shit out right now. <laughs> Does that incur a negative one to roll? Matter of fact, you're a human now. You're a human <laughs> now. There's no more. No. The puns are not. No. Oh, no. no. Steve, you, you need to just look him in the eye and say, heal. <laughs> Don't make me get the squirt bottle. But I'm not a cleric. <laughs> All right. I need you to roll an education roll. That means that you are going to roll 2d6 and add your education modifier and tell me the number. I'm stressed for you. I don't even know why. <laughs> <laughs> My rolls are shit. <laughs> Ten, but plus one, so eleven. Perfect. An eleven. No, wait. You said intellect or education roll? Education. EDU. Okay, yeah. Eleven. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. You are accepted into university. So, you need to do the following. Choose, and this will go for anyone else who successfully gets into college. I'll go ahead and just make a list here for everybody. Um, do, 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 do. Sorry, this gives you a lot of possibilities. All right, you get to choose a level zero and a level one skill from the following list, and then it's that whole list there. For those at home, that list includes administration, advocate, animals, in animal training or veterinarian or to be a veterinary a vet mm. <laughs> or to be a vet um you can get um art trained in art astrogation electronics engineer language medic navigation profession or science now administration 
Okay, do you want administration to be at level no, zero no. or level one? I said defenestration. De defenestration. I see. Yes. All right. Okay. Sometimes um, nobles so just need to go out the window. Exactly. True. And, All right. Uh, so one, yeah. one of those skills at level zero, but one of those at level one. Uh, okay, so animals... Let's go with veterinary. So up that one. Okay. Uh, and let's see. How many other options? Wait, how many? Oh, two of them. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but the, the, um, whatever you pick next will be at level zero. So you're going to want to pick something you're not trained in. Hmm. What is advocate? To advocate is. I mean, like I know what it generally is, but what is it in the context of the game? Sure, sure, sure. I bet you it's something related to law. Oh, do you but... have to roll to get in and then roll to graduate? Yep. Yes. Holy shit. Yeah. I'm not it's going brutal. to college. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. Advocate, advocate gives a knowledge of common legal codes and practices, especially interstellar law. It's basically mm. space law. Sweet. Space. Be a judge advocate general. It also space. gives the traveler experience in oratory, debate, and public speaking, making it an excellent skill for lawyers or politicians. Engineer. Space lawyer. Space lawyer. Oh. All right. Go ahead and mark your engineer at level zero, please. Fantastic. Do you have to roll to graduate? What a question. <laughs> I mean, was it even really a question? All right. Next, increase your education by plus one. That is your base number, not your modifier. Just increase your base education number by one. Sweet. Is it time to see if I graduate? Yes. So you spend the first four years of your life in school. I need you to now please go ahead and roll a intelligence roll. 2d6 plus your intelligence modifier. I believe in you. I'm scared. It's fine. I have no modifier for an elect. Here, your thesis be with you. I sped dog. I Would rolled you... a five. A five? Oh no. Uh, no. <laughs> oh no. Too busy chasing my tail. <laughs> um Graduation. If uh, graduate, increase both. <clears throat> Graduation event. Sounds like you still get the benefit of no, going. Sure. You do. You just so, don't get the double. So he still gets what we've already discussed, but you do not get any additional graduation benefits. So at some point during that four years of going to school, you unfortunately fell behind and you were unable to complete your coursework. And you have not graduated from university. Some jackass with a frisbee was throwing shit. <laughs> so, couldn't could, get to class on time. Could he try again next term? Get the frisbee. Get the frisbee. To graduate because he's already been admitted. If graduation is not achieved, then no benefits are gained. Although the traveler will still have earned some skills during this time. After successful graduation, a traveler may attempt to enter a career of their choice, although they may have earned bonuses, blah, 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 blah. Only one attempt into these pre-career options in any one term. Maybe my big dad can help me, because big dad industries just raided the channel. Hey, big oh, dad! Oh, big dad! So... To me, uh, 
Why are we sumo okay. wrestle to see who the true big right. dad is? Any term in the pre role on the pre career as the any traveler be linked. Description survival. So here's here's my here's my thinking behind it, right? My thinking behind it is you've already been accepted to the school. So you can continue to try to go to school and try to get that into to get that into intellect role high enough to graduate but you would have to be spending an additional four years of your life to do that, which is gonna reduce the total number of terms that you can go out and get better. And you're not gonna get any, you're not gonna get that um, university benefit a second time. Like you're not, like you are simply rolling to graduate. You are not learning anything new in those four years unless you graduate. So if you want to try to go again and spend the next four years after this and that's a decision you can make when we get back around to you okay so you don't have to answer that right now however what you do have to do is roll on your pre-career events i need you to roll 2d6 with no modifier tell me the number five five <clears throat> Taking advantage of your youth, you party as much as you study. Gain carouse level one. See, there's a story here. <laughs> so, Ambrose, you apparently decided to party instead of studying. You got good at parties, but you didn't graduate. How does Steve feel about this? I love it. This is incredible. <laughs> All right, uh, you failed your graduation. That was your pre-event there. You don't. I'm a golden out. retriever, aren't I? Yeah, I'm starting to think so. All right, you you are so Chad right now. Ambrose, that is your first turn. We will return to you in a little bit. All right, Devin. So, uh, on advice of a uh, chat to try and become a, a in the psycher industry, I decided to go to college. You're gonna go to college. And uh, I actually rolled a eight to get in. So perfect. So you do get in. Education eight gets you into school. And uh, I, I I did my rolls all in advance. Okay. Uh, so with my intellect, I did roll a six. Well, what skills did you pick first? What was your level zero right. of your level one skill? Hold on, let me take a quick gander at that and actually pick those. I, I honestly just did the rules in advance to see. Okay, so uh, level one and level zero. Let's see. I will pick navigation at one and uh, electronics at zero. Okay, perfect. All right. You I suppose rolled... I should know where to go to fly. <laughs> All right, you said you rolled a six intelligence? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, did you increase your education by one as well already? Uh, now I have. Okay. All right. So your graduation benefits increase both of the skills chosen before by one level. So your level zero becomes level one. Your level one becomes a level two. Sweet. Increase your education by an additional plus one. More sweet. Graduation grants dice modifier plus one to qualify for the following careers. Agent, Army, Citizen Corporate, Entertainer Journalist, Marines, Navy, Scholar, or Scout. So if you go into any of those careers, you'll get a bonus. Okay. Graduation allows a commission role to be taken before the first term of a military career, so long as it is the first career chosen after university. Success will mean the traveler enters the career at officer rank one. If graduation was with honors, uh, dice, uh, your dice modifier plus two is granted on your first commission roll. You did not graduate with honors, that doesn't count. Basically, if you go into the military and you get accepted, you will go in as an officer. So those are your benefits for graduation. And now I need you to go ahead and roll 2d6 on the pre-career events table. Oh, I did that already. And I... I am honestly surprised because uh, I rolled a four, which is 
a supposedly harmless prank goes wrong and someone gets hurt or, or physically or emotionally roll society plus eight if you succeed gain a rival if you fail you gain an enemy if you roll a two you fail to graduate and get taken prisoner or just take the prisoner career in your next turn i rolled an 11. I, see it. <laughs> I had i rolled an 11. actually i rolled a 10 because it's minus one but okay. yeah i i succeeded That's i have awesome. a rival okay so yes, somewhere during your school, you had you tried to do a harmless prank, it went terribly wrong, and someone got hurt. That person is now your rival. So just mark down that you have a rival, and we'll flesh that out at a later time. Uh, everyone keep that in mind. If something happens during your term one that you think can tie into either Ambrose or Devin's uh, events, start building your connections did you party with ambrose did you see him do something at a party were you you know at school when the prank went down something like that right communicate with the other players start building those connections all right moving right along akima all right i think i'm gonna have my character go to school get okay. an education university or military academy university all right education role please um that is an eight. An eight. Okay. Then you are accepted into university. Perfect. I'm going to go with astrogation and profession. Okay. Uh, which one is at level zero? Which one's at level one? Um, astrogation is going to be level one and then profession at two. Okay. Uh, well, hope, well, you only get that if you successfully graduate. Oh, yes. Sorry. Uh, level zero and what I mean. Okay. Perfect. All right. And do I need to do an intelligence roll now? Well, first update your education by one. Okay, perfect. And now you do need to roll the intelligence roll. That is going to be a nine. A nine. So you do graduate, but not with honors. So close. Super. Darn it. Okay. All right. So you can increase both of the skills chosen by one level. So your level zero becomes one. Your level one becomes two. Okay. Your education goes up by an additional plus one. And as mentioned to Devin, you get bonuses to different careers and uh, things like that. Okay. What were those careers again? I'm gonna go ahead and throw it up on our Discord. Okay. It's a pretty extensive list. Agent, Army, Citizen, Corporate, Entertainer, Journalist, Marine, Navy, Scholar, Scout. And then you can take a commission if you go into the military. Okay. Uh, hmm. Would you have to decide just yet? That'll, that'll happen on your next term through. All right, sounds good. All right, however, you have a life event happening, pre-career event. Please roll 2d6 with no modifier. Tell me the number. I got a five. A five. Okay, taking advantage of youth, you also partied as much as you studied. So we have two people partying, gain, carouse, one. So we've got a couple of party animals up in the ship. All right, what do you think, Ambrose? Did we party together? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. It's lit. We did party together. I, find I imagine it hilarious there was a lot too. of sleepless nights. Absolutely. I find it hilarious too that, you know, we have the, the furry ones. It's true. Yeah. Furry ones. Um, you know, we I gotta like stick to point, together. I would like to point out two things. So, the you two, uh, Noslin and Vodiger, um, went to school together, supposedly, or at least near each other. Mm -hmm. um, you were both party uh, partiers. One of you failed to graduate because of it, and the <laughs> other one did graduate, but just missed out on graduating with honors. Hmm. So... I feel like it might have been a night where my character was like, oh, come on, just a few more drinks, just a few more hours. 
and maybe they didn't study well enough that night or that was the night that caused them to not graduate. I don't know. What do you think, Ambrose? I'm feeling saboteur. I mean, oh, I'm not that makes sorry. sense for me because I didn't graduate. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay. After Kings. John. John. Can't prove it. Are you going to try to go to university? Are you going to try to go to the military academy? Or are you going to look for a job? Um, if you were to say military, probably. Um, but, like, academy is next to that word? Correct. You and I, I, he's not really a higher learning, I don't think. Uh, sort of character. Uh, so yeah, I think he's just going to go find a job. Well, hold on. Mm -hmm. So, as you mentioned, the military academy is a place of higher learning, right? Uh, but it is still the military, so um, if you want to attempt, you can. However, if you don't think the academy is for you, you can just join the military as your as a you know you can just enlist. So the army, the marines, and the navy are all career options, not the academy. Just going straight into the service. Army, marines, and navy. There are other like... options as well. Um, but those three are available. Uh, all careers are listed on page 21. I feel like he's going in the Navy. The Navy? Mm hmm Okay. You're going to try to get into the Navy. I'm going to try. Yep. In the Navy. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> so you go to the Navy recruiter, and if you fill out the application, they give you a little bit of a test to see if you're a good fit. I need you to roll intelligence, please. Please don't. I mean, I asked so nicely. Huh. Uh, I don't know if that passes or not. Seven. Seven? Seven passes. Six and a one. Perfect. Uh, and you have a zero intelligence modifier? I have a zero intelligence modifier. And that's a seven. Excellent. <laughs> you just scrape by... Ooh, that's why he didn't go to university. <laughs> <laughs> you just scrape by um, uh, just over the baseline um, of being accepted into the Navy. You know, you guys are responsible for all the interstellar and naval patrols. You guys fly the ships, right? You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's, uh, you, gotta, you gotta have some smarts there. You gotta have a few smarts. You gotta be able to tell direction all right. in a 3D space. So, I need you to pick which assignment you would have applied for. Line crew, you serve as a general crewman or officer on a ship of the line. An engineer or gunner, you serve as a specialist technician on a starship. Or flight, you are a pilot of a shuttle, fighter, or other light craft. Which one of those three would you have tried to apply for? I know it's going to be a bit redundant, um, but John is going to bleed over a little bit and say he wants to be a pilot. Okay. Because it, it, there's just nothing more terrifying, fascinating, and, or exhilarating than just having the reins to everything right there and knowing, you know what, let's go. Excellent. So you're going to become a flight um, Navy person. All right. So, John, I would like you to please put the following skills at level zero. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. Pilot, unless it's higher, right? You just, you know, um, if it's already at zero, you get nothing. Um, um, if it's higher than zero, don't change it. But if any of these are currently untrained, put them up to level zero. Okay. Pilot. Vac suit. Athletics. 
gunner, mechanic, and gun combat. That's a lot of skill. Yep. Each of these are now at level zero. Okay. Meaning you are trained in each one of those skills. That is your Navy basic training. Thank you very much. You are welcome. I would like you to now please take a look on page 36. And you decide how you are going to focus your attention over the next four years. Why did you join the Navy? Was it to develop yourself personally and your own skill set? This is how you increase characteristics. So if you're hoping to try to increase one of your core stats, you want to focus on personal development. Do you want to try to take one of those skills I just listed to you and become even better at it? Or do you want to throw yourself into your career and focus on the flight aspect of your job? So personal development, increasing your core, your core. Mm -hmm. service skills, increasing your general naval skills, or flight, the skills of your specific assignment. Which one of those would you focus on in your, four, in your first four years in the Navy? I think he would focus on the general naval skills. So your service skills. Yeah. General naval. Okay. Please roll a d6. Oh, just one. Okay. Yes. No. Four. Four. Increase gunner by one level. Not gun combat. Nope. Gunner. Gun or okay. Skill level one. All right. There you go. Excellent. Uh, go through otherwise choose. All right, now I need you to roll for survival. You were a, um, a pilot using the flight career progress, which means in order to survive the first four years, you need to roll a dexterity roll, please. <laughs> All right. Uh, 2d6 plus dex. 2d6 plus dex, please. All right, here we go. Get ready for this. Uh, that'd be a straight 10. Straight 10. Okay. Excellent. You succeed in your flights, and you suffer no mishaps. Steve, I don't know if you know this, but you just gave me a minor heart attack. Good. You're playing traveler. <laughs> what is it? That's the feeling you have every time you take your small light ship out into the depths of space. Because you know that one of these times might be the time you don't come back to port. So, Fair enough. However, you made it. No mishaps. However, life still happens. So please go ahead and roll me 2d6 with no modifiers. Gotcha. All right, life's happening. Life happens on this roll. Eight. Eight. Your vessel participated in a diplomatic mission. Oh, hell yeah. Gain one of the following options. Uh, recon level one, diplomat level one, steward level one or a contact what is okay definition of recon definition Just literally reconnaissance let's talk about skills 
Recon. Reconnoiter. A traveler trained in recon is able to scout out dangers and spot threats, usually objects or out of place people. So just, you know, your general ability to observe and recon a situation. I'm going to say he got a contact. He got a contact. Please note mm -hmm. that you have one contact. You can't really see without both, though. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, you can. Just bad depth perception. All right. So you are currently a crewman, John. That is the... As one does. That is the rank zero enlisted level. So crewman, please roll me an education roll. Fuck. <laughs> no. I can't get away from the int and education rolls. What? Okay. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Ah. Oh, I failed this one four. You rolled a four. I rolled a four. I have a plus zero. Okay. Plus zero. <clears throat> Unfortunately, you have not shown great promise as a crewman, and you have been passed over for advancement. Oh. You did not receive a promotion this term. Okay. You will remain a crewman if you choose to stay in the Navy. So, John, at this time, will you be staying in the Navy or are you calling it quits after four years? Oh, just hard and fast? Uh, okay. Um, you know what? I feel like he or she, whatever it ends up being decided that they were going to that 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 they got on the wrong side of their officer's officer very early on um just kind of being themselves and that while the diplomatic mission helped and they were you know commended by their contacts and they were said good things their officer's officer n never really took a liking and therefore blocked any sort of promotion and or you know transfer to another unit or anything because you know your boss's boss has a lot to say about what you do sure uh so i'm gonna say seeing as how they kind of dead ended there they're just going to move on to a different career or kind of move back home and start up their like I had an idea of, of kind of like this almost beach bum lazy, you know, person who's got, you know, a surfer board and a boat and, you know, wants to be in the Navy to sort of like navigate ships and stuff like that. Maybe they go home and they, you know, build surfboards for a while and just have fun in the sun for a minute. And forget about the bigger issues of the world. Z. Okay, perfect. So you are doing performing the action referred to as mustering out you are leaving this career behind so i need you to roll um <laughs> 1d6 please just the 1d6 all right. just the 1d6 oh uh that's a straight one <laughs> all right uh you leave after four years with 1000 credits in four oh. years, you saved up essentially a thousand dollars. I mean, that doesn't seem terrible. Sure, sure, man. Oh, so I'm clearly not getting <laughs> context. Okay, here we go. However, more important than the cash, you leave with either a personal vehicle or a share in a ship. So would you like to have a personal vehicle 
you know, a car of some sort, you know, like a, a you know, your own personal transit or stake or shares in a ship. You would like clarification on the other of those? Um, I, I think they're pretty clear. Steve, why do you do this to me? <laughs> a share of a ship, Steve? Uh-huh. Would you like to know specifically what that does? Just I have a feeling, but yeah. All right. Ship shares it. represent contacts, credit rating, savings, and favors owed that a traveler can put towards ownership of a space vessel worth roughly one million credits. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see now. I see how you're... Okay, yeah, all right. Travelers... I have pull... context now. <laughs> Travelers can pull their ship shares towards the use of a vessel, but cannot trade ship shares for cash. It is very unlikely that the travelers will be able to own anything but the smallest starship outright at the start of the game, so most crews end up working to support a mortgage on their spacecraft. The more ship shares that a group of travelers can put together, the bigger a ship they can afford. Ships are expensive. Just a heads up. So, uh, um, if you would like any information about a personal vehicle, I can give you that as well. No, I'm good. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the ship share, Steve. All right. You have one Because <laughs> that's ship cool share. as fuck. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. You own share in a spaceship. Hell yes. Let's okay. go. All right. That was your muster out. You have $1,000 cash on you. We have done all of that. Which means you are good. Let's see. Build your advancement. Choose one of the same career. Okay, John's good. After John is Rachel. Oh no. So Rachel, university, military academy, or job? So I was looking at going to military school, but that succession of intellect and education roles that John had to make. It scared me away from it. <laughs> because, again, my education is three. That, that's not my question. The so, question is, does Rachel's character, <laughs> Space Izzy, do you want to go to Military Academy? All right. So if I try to get in, but I fail, is that just like a wasted four year career term if you fail to gain entry something happens something happens okay God. all right that's almost as bad as hey you can try so the entry for the army is endurance seven and marines Correct. is eight and my endurance is four okay <laughs> so I think I will also, at the very least, try and give myself the best benefit possible, and also go into the Navy. Hey! Dude. What? <laughs> <laughs> because Where the I intelligence still roll. have to roll better than average. Wait, wait, hold on. I want to make sure. Are you are you being legitimate? Yes, because, because... the Navy roll is eight plus, and my uh, for intellect, and my intellect is seven. Your intellect is. Oh, yeah, so wait. she, so Rachel just needs to roll an eight or higher on two d six. Yes, right. Which wait, is wait, still... what's, your, what's your what is your modifier for intelligence? Zero. So you would need to roll eight on two d six to get. Wouldn't it be better to go to university? Wait, uh... remember? Okay, I just want to clarify something here. The entry number uh -huh. is simply what you have to roll to get into the school. Yes. So if you have an endurance of what modifier? Uh, negative Minus one. one. Oh! Yeah. Oh, I understand <laughs> now. I misunderstood. I apologize. I thought... I got you. Okay. Some, uh, Mr. Morden81 redeemed a boon, individual boon for in the Navy. I don't know if that was for Rachel, if that's for Rachel. Um, I'm, we will refund you. Yeah. I, I, I am not going to accept any boons uh, in character creation. 
Um, but the, I think that you. would get out of that would get out of hand too quickly. But we will get you your points back. But, uh, thank you for the subscription, Kredrigar. <gasps> However, there will be a plethora of bonuses available once we begin our traveling. So, absolutely. All right. Let's see if I get into Navy school. All right, going to the Naval Do Academy. It. In the Navy. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's, that, that's, that, that is. Just make it. There it is. You got an eight? I jokes. rolled an eight. Hey! <laughs> Himbo Yay. for the win. So, um, Rachel's space himbo just passes the um, test and application to get into the Naval Academy. Very nice. Okay. You're gonna gain um okay, so if you scroll down to the navy, um you're going to get all of the naval um what page is navy on? Uh you are want to look on page thirty-six. Okay. Alright. So you see that list of skills under service skills? So pilot, vac suit, athletics, gunner, mechanic, gun combat. Service skills? Ah, yeah, yes. All, yes. Um, that's what I get. Okay. Pilot and vac suit and why are these not... Oh, they're... Alphabetical the other way. I'm not sure. Um, but you get each of those skills at level zero. Nice. Um, so if you already have any of those at level zero, it does not go up to level one. You just get them at level zero. All right. Are they trained? Yes. Cool. Okay. You also uh... Okay, for those who are that I've admitted, the popular choice for those among military families, the terms of the jeu before joining the military academy is aside. The academy is tied to at level zero. Gain all service skills of the military career with parents tied to at level zero as with basic training. Okay. So, going to the academy, you get the same basic training that anyone gets who goes into mm -hmm. the Navy. However, there is the possibility that you'll get the graduation benefit. So, I need you to roll intelligence, please. God. You can do it. I'm not going to graduate, guys. You're going to flunk out of the Naval Academy? I am. You told me that Oh, wait, no. Intellect, not education. I have a chance. Nope. Yes, you intellect. You intelligence. You got it. Okay. Uh, what you am can I... do it. What do I need to roll? Seven plus. You can do it. Seven or higher. You can do it. Seven. Four years in a row. Oh, <laughs> damn it. oh no. Oh no. Ew, no. Oh. I remember you as a washout from the academy. If a yeah. traveler if a traveler attends a military academy but fails to graduate, they may still automatically enter the military career that the acad that the academy is tied to so long as they did not roll two or less on the graduation roll. If they chose to enter this career, they may not make a commission roll in their first term. Okay. So if you choose to go into the Navy in your second term, you automatically get it. You don't have to roll to actually get accepted. However, if you do that, you can't apply for promotion in your first term in the Navy because the stink of washing out of the academy is still on you. I mean, I could always go with my backup plan. Well, we can possibly. However, let's find out 
What happened to you? Um, please roll 2d6 with no modifier. I rolled a 5. Taking advantage of you. <laughs> you party as much as you study. Game Carouse 1. How do we have... <laughs> Were you friends with Ambrose's character? Probably. You know, I think we Kino? probably ended up going on some kind of vendor together. It was, it was uh, this universe's version. I completely version missed of final Man. exams. And Keem's just dipped out early. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, you this... guys can, can set your own future on fire if you want, but I'm leaving. But, but this, it, that is it, incredible that all is, three of you rolled a five. Is that from the life events or is that from the uh, Navy events? That's uh, from the pre pre career events because uh, this is the military academy, not the Navy. Okay. Oh my gosh. You don't get any graduation benefits. You washed out because you were partying. And that ends your first term. We'll come back and find out what happens to Rachel in second term on their next go through. Finally, for their first term, unnamed traveler Dave. Yes. I was I uh, was Johnny Jump Ahead because sure, I didn't want to take up too much time. Of course. Um, so I decided to go to university, which I succeeded in getting in. Okay. Um, I took Advocate. I'm okay. trying to get to my skills. Advocate at level one and profession at zero. Okay. Um, I rolled... So I rolled a nine, but with my intelligence modifier plus one, it was a 10 on graduation. Okay. So uh, 10 is to graduate with honors? Yeah. Uh, so I just, you know, I did what it said. I increased the both skills by one that I picked. I increased my education by an additional one. Mm -hmm. So my education has gone up two now from going to university. <clears throat> um, and then that's uh, where I am. And then I rolled a two on the pre-career events. Okay. You want to go ahead and read what that uh, says? You are approached by an underground and highly illegal psionic group who sends potential in you. I may test psi, which I don't know what that is because it's not a stat that I see, um, and attempt to enter the psion career in any subsequent term. Okay. You have access to a special career option no one else does. So. Um, psionics in this world oh, I'm so are incredibly um, well not on the up and up usually in Traveler, a few humans and aliens have developed potent psychic abilities such as telepathy, telekinesis, or even teleportation. Learning to properly control psionics is never easy, and their use cannot always be relied upon, but they are guaranteed to provide their practitioners with a dangerous edge simply not possible for normal humans. The Imperium, Psionics, and the Law. In the charted space universe, learning to harness psionics is a difficult process, made harder by the Third Imperium's ban on psych psionics. The Psionics Institute that study mental powers have gone underground, following a disastrous attempt to guide human development centuries ago. In other civilizations, such as the Zidani Consulate, psionics are fully accepted part of the human condition. We are in the Imperium, specifically going to be in the Trojan Reach, which is part of the Imperium, but not fully Imperium. You, however, would be unwelcomed inside the borders of the Imperium if you were discovered to be a psionic. Um, psionics are powered by the psionic strength characteristic, your psi. Um, this characteristic cannot be rolled during Traveler creation without the referee's permission, and even then it is quite rare. To determine a Traveler's Psi, roll 2D and subtract the number of terms served by the Traveler in all careers thus far. Psi diminishes over time unless actively used. For example, a 38-year-old Traveler with five terms served would roll 2D minus 5 to determine their Psi. A Traveler with a Psi of 0 has no potential for Psionic Talents. Okay, 
So it sounds like if I want to do this, I should do it early. Yes. Okay. All right. Let me see. Charlie wishes to develop psychic abilities, requires training, seems to have a rule, Charlie's been a teacher. Fighting such an instructor can be an adventure in of itself. Most teachers will charge that. Tinking. Okay. All right. So let me read exactly what it says here for you, because I was not expecting anyone to get that. That is very rare. I mean, if you don't want me to have it, I can re-roll. No, nope, nope. that's fine. It's part of the game. Let's do it. You may test your psi and attempt to. You may test your psi and attempt to enter the Scion career in any subsequent term. And that's one full sentence. So that means that in your second term, mm -hmm. we will roll to determine your Psy, which means that you will be rolling 2d6 minus one to determine your psionic ability. If I choose to go in at term two. If you choose to go in at term two. Or correct. I choose to attempt to get into it at term correct. two. You can okay. do this at any subsequent term. So you can wait, yeah. not wait, however you want to do it. Okay. Um, and then we'll go from there if you choose to do so. But as of right now, this mysterious person has approached you and told you that they can expand your mind. All they need you to do is come with them for just two weeks. And they're always available. That's not sus at all. Nope, no. not at all. Nope. Even on right. Mark White Van. It's right there. Okay. So you have done all of the benefits of your university and your yep. pre-career event. This ends all of your first terms. You are all 22 years old. We have a, we have a small party group forming of a couple of washouts and one almost honors graduate. We have someone who joined the Navy but didn't quite find it to be their fit. Devin, what did you do? I actually went and graduated like oh, term that's, one. That's right. I, we have I, I, Go ahead. I, I, I even went and had some fun and pranked somebody, except somebody got hurt. We have a prankster who happened to uh, gain uh, a rival in school. Uh, apparently, you're not supposed to use things that, you know, oxidize quickly and cause. It, I didn't realize that it would explode like that. I see. And we have our unnamed traveler who has all the natural born gifts in the world, may or may not be coming from some sort of noble society and who has been approached by a mysterious underground psychic. And with that, everybody, we're going to take a quick break. And we'll come back and continue character creation, hopefully a little bit more of a quicker pace now that we've all kind of gone through a term and We'll see how our group continues to flesh out from here. We'll be back in approximately 10 minutes.
ます。
Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Thank you all so much for your patience. We have been flipping through the skills, trying to get a handle on where our characters are going and know what all of the specialties are. Because you can be a pilot, but what are you able to fly? Small spacecraft, medium-sized spacecraft, capital ship, all that good stuff. Two chicken strapped to my feet. Um, okay. So... All right. Advanced education, to answer the question in the side chat, if you have an education score of that minimum, it opens up an option that you are able to do when focusing on your term. So what you do every time you go into a term, you see each of those different categories, personal development, service skill, advanced education, so, uh, and then the three different um, uh, assignments. You pick one of those columns to focus on for that term. You roll a D6 and whatever number comes up, that's the bonus you get for that term. So term one, you got a lot of skills. Term two, it gets harder to learn stuff as you get older, right? So you're gonna start getting, you have to start making a lot more choices about what you might learn. You're basically gonna only be getting one, like one advancement going forward, um, you know, depending on roles. So like, for example, Devin, for your question, if you had an education of eight or higher and you chose to focus on advanced education for this term, you would roll a D6 and whatever number came up, you would get a one level increase in whatever that skill is. So if you were a one, you would get a one level increase in medic. But you could only get that column if you have that minimum education number. All right. Okay. So, Ambrose. You partied with an Aslan and some weird Navy person. And that started you on a downward spiral that got you to the point where you flunked out of school. You spent some time in college. You learned a couple of things here and there, but you never left with that degree. And it's been four years, 22 years old now. You need a job. Where are you applying? Oh boy. Uh... Your options are on page 21, if you did not glean at that currently. My PDF is a butt. Okay. Um, let me do this really quick. Screenshot it. What a terrible idea. If there's anything, and no, he's knocking over my lamp. Um, <laughs> if there's anything like veterinary related or engineering science, oh okay. yeah, can I get a job in carousing? <laughs> yes. What? <laughs> yes. Merchant noble you know what else could be oh, a dilettante. probably an agent I could be I could be courier because I fetch be... <laughs> god damn it, <laughs> Do it. Um, Do you it. could be a corporate agent you work for a corporation spying on rival organizations one of the focuses of them is corrals oh there's a lot of options here just you know i want... think uh perhaps scientists might be more towards my leaning a scholar scientist so because yeah. i do have the science skill engineering skill mechanic skill survival skill and animal skills okay all right i mean let's take a look here individual I'm probably training. overthinking it no no no. you want to be a scientist okay um all right 
So, individuals trained in technology or research sciences who conduct scientific investigations into materials, situations, and phenomena. They also practice medicine. So the qualification to become a scholar is an intelligence of six or higher on your role. So, so chat did point out, uh, Krad Ragnar pointed out there's medical veterinarian. Mm -hmm. uh, and <laughs> Lupine says, they'll never suspect my corporate espionage because I'm the goodest space boy. <laughs> good boy, good boy. You're, who's your good boy? Uh, They're all true. I don't. I just didn't see medical veterinarian in our. It's... I do not see it. Um. Maybe it's just in an expansion, or maybe. Down the uh, line. Let's take a look here. Give me one second. If you want to move on to someone else, you know, while we're. Figuring that out. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can we can come back to you if you would like. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, Devin. I'm I'm deciding that uh, I'm gonna take a career path in being a scholar. And being a scholar, okay. All right, so you graduated school and you start to become a scholar. Excellent. And what um what track in scholar would you be focusing on? Would you be a field researcher, a scientist? Oh, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be a physician. A physician. So you're a doctor, healer, or medical researcher. We'll use air quotes on healer. Okay. Well, before we go into that, I'm gonna need an intelligence roll from you, please. My intel and uh, because it's scholar, I get that uh, plus to it. We'll come and to say in. It cancels out my minus, and I rolled an eight. Perfect. Nice. Eight qualifies. So you are accepted into the job as a scholar and as a physician. Excellent. So this is your first career. You went to university. Now you are going into your career. So um service skills drive or uh so all of your service skills there you're going to get those mm -hmm. at level zero yes okay uh, again if you have any of those already they do not go up uh they're only mm -hmm. at level zero for basic training all right so uh were you able to get all of those yes training? so i got all of those the only yeah and okay. i'm just checking specialties because i have uh, my flyer specialty and i just had i'm going to be an ornithopter pilot Okay. Uh, well, and I got. Hmm? No, you only get a specialty when you get to level one. Oh, okay. Well, when I have it, it's going to be that. Perfect. So if you get a level up of flyer, you can then go into specialty. But for right now, okay. flyer, this this would not take your flyer up to level one. It would only be at zero if it's basic training. Perfect. Okay. So now you need to decide how you're focusing your time in this first term. Personal development service skill do you have an education of 10 i do not and you cannot do advanced education yet um so personal development service skill or physician um remember personal development is how you're going to increase your core characteristics service skills your kind of generic scholar skills physician your assignment skills so how are you do be focusing your first term oh let's make it my physician skills Physician skills, please roll me 1d6. All right. Let me continue to roll it on here so that it will roll as terribly as it has been. And that is a one. One. Your medic skill increases by one level. Hooray. What does that bring it up to? One. Okay. So if you are at level one for that now, you do now gain uh, the special a specialty for medic. So you will need to decide what that is. Okay. 
Um, if there even are any. Let's there aren't any. There, there aren't, aren't any. any. So you're good. Good to go. All right. Um, after making that roll, start your term, go through there. Now, please go ahead and roll for survival. Roll for survival. Um, you need to make a education roll, please. Okay. I suppose I should actually use my sheet if I'm doing this. An eight. You succeed in your survival. No mishaps. Now please go ahead and roll on your events table. Events table. That's 2d6 with no modifier. That's a nine. Nine. You make a breakthrough in your field. Gain uh, a dice modifier of plus two to your next advancement roll, which is great because you're about to make an advancement roll. Sweet. So your advancement roll is going to be a education roll, please. And remember, you roll 2d6, add your education modifier, plus two. Oh, that's a seven. Seven total, even with the plus two? Even with the plus two. Ooh, that's One rough. shy. So, Devin, here's what I want you to really take into consideration here. You went to school, and you graduated with honors, correct? No. No, you did not. That was that was Dave. Um, you went to school. You graduated. You have taken this job as a physician, and you have made a major breakthrough. Something in your first, you know, in your first four years, something that no one else had come up with. You broke that barrier. However, you didn't have the educational background the pedigree that they wanted and you get passed over for advancement in your career. Sounds about right. Mm, it sounds like someone took your took your work. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, somebody totally stole my work. There you go. All right. It, you know what it is? That person, they were higher societal standing because I'm just some scrub Good from enough. nowhere. Could have okay. been possibly your rival. Rosalind oh, Franklin, that is bastard. that you? Yeah. Ooh, you do have a rival. Oh, interesting. That cheap bastard stole my work. I only blew up his leg. God. How was All I right. supposed to know that acid ate through skin that quickly? All right, <laughs> Devin, please increase your age by another four years. Um, I missed you all. <laughs> please choose whether you are going to remain a physician or if you're going to leave this career in search of something else. Uh, I think I'll remain. Okay. I want. I, I really want my novel idea to actually be better this time. Excellent. Okay. Maybe if maybe if I inject like their spleen with stuff, it'll make it better. Jesus. Well, hey, at first it was the kidneys, and that worked out really well. So, I mean, spleen's a logical jump, right? Absolutely. All right. Perfect. You are good. No Wouldn't aging go that has... far. I'm sorry? Wouldn't go that far. Nah, good. perfect. Perfect in every way. All right. After Devin is Akima. Awesome. Um, I am going to do the merchant career, actually, and we're going to do merchant marine. Merchant marine. Uh, I just need a intelligence of an intelligence roll, please. Okay, let's do it. That is going to be a, do I have a negative here? Nope, that's a five. A five? Five succeeds in qualifying you to be a merchant. Perfect. All right. So you join the Merchant Marines. You work on one of the massive cargo haulers run by the Imperium or a mega corporation. Mm -hmm. um, if you look on page 34, uh, mm -hmm. all of those skills under service skills you get at level zero. If you already have level See. zero in it, no benefit. All right. Also, these are all new, so that's good. Okay, perfect. So those all become trained for you. All right. 
Now, in, in the next four years, will you focus on personal development, additional service skills, or the role of being a merchant marine? Remember, mm. personal development, which no one's done yet, is how you increase your core character, your core stats. So strength, dex, endurance, et cetera. Right. I think I'm going to focus on, hmm, this is actually a good one. I'm going to actually focus on backsuit personal development. Personal development. Excellent. Please roll me a d6 with no modifier. I got a one. A one. Your strength increases by one. Oh, okay. I thought that meant I get less skills, but it just correlates to the actual thing. Okay, perfect. Correct. Yep. Awesome. All right. Now, I need you to roll me an education, please. Um, for education, that is going to be a four. A four. Dun, dun, dun. You have faced a mishap in your career. Oh no. What happens? Okay. You have something just something happens. Everything's going well. You're you're doing well. You're getting stronger. You're lifting cargo, you're doing what you need to do. However, please roll a D6. Three. A sudden war breaks out and destroys your trade route and all of your contacts, forcing you to flee that region of space. Gain gun combat level one or pilot level one. Ooh, I will gain pilot level one. Okay, uh, check to see if that comes with a specialty because at level one, you need to pick your specialty. Okay, sounds good. I have a lot of specialties I need to Okay. Pick. However, Ooh. because the, the, the ship that you were hired aboard was destroyed and all of your contacts in the merchant marines killed, you're not you're not a merchant marine anymore. Oh, oh no. no. What a short lived career as a merchant. Correct. You are exited from this career and you do not get any bonuses or roles on the mustering out table. You leave this career with nothing, <gasps> except those that skill you, you just got. Oh, what a so, bummer. Does this mean she has to pick a new skill next round? This means that you or a have new career. to- Correct, you must choose a different career next term. You cannot attempt to become a merchant again for at least one term. Got it. Okay, so, that sounds good. So piracy. It seems like the appropriate leap. Sounds we're all going to piracy. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's like, no. Okay. No <laughs> Are you surprised, Steve? Not in the slightest. No. <laughs> okay. Uh so that um let's see. Uh, if failed will for mishap, leave the career, in which case go back to start new term. You're done. That ends your term. But please age yourself four years. Got it. 26. Excellent. What a beautiful number. Yeah. All right. After Akima goes... I sent you a thing in the side. Steve. Yeah, I, yeah I, I saw. I just... I, hmm. I'll get back to you. Um, after Akima goes, John. I want to be an agent now. Uh, specifically, I want to. Uh, I was thinking law enforcement, maybe intelligence. Yes, mm. law enforcement while the rest of us are becoming pirates. Yes. Yes. Uh, as Corbett doesn't seem very intelligent, I might have to persuade somebody. I don't like that. Uh, yeah, law enforcement. Let's do law enforcement. Law enforcement. Agent <laughs> law enforcement. Okay. Uh, let's scroll up to agent. All right. That's number one. Number one. Uh, please go ahead and roll me a intelligence roll. 2d6, yeah. Plus your intelligence modifier. Uh, okay, so 2d6. 
Okay. Oh, no. Don't drop them. That's too bad. I dropped one. Uh, seven. Seven. That's exactly what I need. That's actually more than what you need. Well, I have to minus one for every previous career, right? Um. Oh, right. Apo apologies. Minus one. Um. Because you you were a uh, in the navy, right? In so, the navy. So you rolled a seven total. Minus one for a previous career brings you down to a six. However, that does qualify. You are good. So you become a law enforcement agent. You are a police officer or a detective. I would put a boo in here, but you know you're you. You're fine. Um. Boo. So um. Be a so. Detective. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Ooh, um, so, fine. this is this is an interesting thing here. So, you are joining your second career. because You did not go to university. So, even though everyone else in term two is getting basic training by going to their first career, you've already gotten basic training. Okay. So, a new career is not going to put that level of resources into you. You're 22 years old. You should know what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. However, they will give you onboarding. So... Please look at the service skills listed under agent, and okay. you can increase one of those by a level. Uh, let's see here. Wait, let me and I can go from level zero to level one, right? Oh, no, no, no. Apologies. I'm sorry. That's a misspeak by me. Um, it is still going to only be at level zero. So you can take okay. one skill from service skills you get at level zero. All right. I'm missing a flyer recon gun combat. So uh, yep. I'm going to do investigate, I think. Okay. So you're going to take investigate from untrained to trained at level zero. All right. All right. Great. Now, John. Is yes. your character going to focus on personal development, additional service skills, or law enforcement for this term? Uh, personal development seems kind of good right now. It's always a good Yeah, decision. I'm going to do that. I'm okay. Do personal development. So you're you're taking this time. You got the job. You're working it, but you're focusing on yourself. You're who. You're what matters, right? So, please roll one d six. No modifiers. Huh. One. One. Uh, please increase your gun combat by one level. This can go to one. That is correct. So if you have level zero, this goes up to level one. Okay. <clears throat> Alrighty. All right. Now I need you to roll a endurance, please. 2d6 plus endurance? 2d6 plus endurance. Uh, aha. Uh, four. Four! Always on the damn promotion. No, Checks. that was not for promotion, my friend. Oh, no, no. That oh, was no. for surviving your term oh, as, a, no. as a law enforcement agent. Which means mishap. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, mishap means there's a chance I don't die. True, true. John, your character is going about his day when something absolutely terrible happens. Please roll 1d6. Whatever it no is, modifiers. Blame, whatever it is, I'm blaming it on pirates. <laughs> Four. Four. You learn something you should not know, and people want to kill you for it. <laughs> what the fuck? Gain oh, an no. enemy. So mark down that you have an enemy. Oh, I know an enemy. you know who's dirty. You know who you the know, dirty cops are. You, you figure out who the dirty cops are. You gain an enemy and deception at level one. Oh, 
So okay. even if it's untrained, it goes straight to level one. That's not bad, though. No. Nope. However. Oh, no. Okay. They run you out. No. Oh. You're not welcome there. Motherfucker. And your captain calls you in and asks you for your badge uh. and your gun. And you are fired from the police. Man, from the, that. From the police. So. So one of the reasons I took the agent subclass was because that number, if you roll a three, you get a chance of that getting another ship share for mustering out. Oh no. <laughs> that ain't happening. Nope. You do <laughs> not get the benefits of mustering out because you got fired. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I, I, all right. Here we are. Let's do this thing. You may not take the agent um, career path in your third term. You must choose something else. Okay. Please All do. right. After John. Pirate, 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 pirate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that Rachel wants to be a law enforcement agent. Rachel, you're saying you're saying a citizen worker, correct? Blue collar on an industrial world. Freelance capitalist. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Hey, respect. Uh, all right. I need a dexterity roll from you, please. Oh my god. I roll a five. <laughs> <laughs> what? Everyone <laughs> fails out of everything. That's hey Rachel. Awesome. <laughs> Did you just fail being a pirate? Yes. <laughs> How? How? How did you fail at being a pirate? You, Sorry, you like the law too much. Get out. Well, here's what happens. Oh, God. Rachel. Oh, no. You go to the Naval Academy. And even though you don't graduate, you come with a certain amount of training and resources and time and effort that the Navy has put into you or the military in general. And you tell them that you're just gonna leave. And they tell you, no, you have a free plate. You're just gonna be accepted. You might not have a commission, <laughs> but you have to, you know, you gotta go serve your time, you know? You try to walk away, but you don't make the inroads with the rogues you think you're going to be able to because you walk like someone in the Navy. You talk like oh, someone no. in the Navy. And then it comes in the mail. Oh, no. Am I being drafted? You have been drafted. I thought you got summons for jury duty. Now, you have a you have two choice. You have you have you have a choice here. Okay. Are you going to answer your draft call, or are you going to run and be a drifter? Oh. What am I being drafted to do? Good question. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Please roll a d6. Okay, so this is just to know what I'm being drafted to do. This isn't committing to showing up, right? Uh, you either uh, apply to the draft or be randomly sent to one of the military services, or you may spend that term traveling as a drifter. Yes, this is going to be just to see what you get called on for the draft. Six. You are being drafted into a law enforcement agency on a local world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck that. I'm becoming a drifter. <laughs> they, they had to replace John's character somehow. <laughs> there's a very there's a there's a um, 
there's a position in this local um, police firm that just keeps hiring and losing people. So they've put in an application for just some academy washout to come, you know, stand in. These are, yeah, so in other words, like these are just the worst people at keeping a secret. These cops cannot stop saying that we are the bad guys. All right. So you're becoming a drifter. You do not have to roll any qualification to be a drifter. Oh, no. Wait, wait, Rachel, wouldn't this law enforcement agency that John got kicked out of be the best place for you to be, though? (laughs) Okay, but I was already looking at drifter because it looks cool. I want to be a scavenger. Fair. Okay. No qualification needed, Rachel. You're a drifter. (laughs) You ain't got no job. I'm a um, scavenger, thank you very much. You are a scavenger. Okay, so you do work as a belter um, on a salvage crew. So you just pick up trash in space and try to resell it. All right. This technically is your first career because you were in the military academy before uh-huh. now. So use your assignment skill table for basic training. So you're not using service skill use the scavenger list um for your basic training oh, which means okay i need to everything things. yeah everything under scavenger you get at level zero okay sorry i thought i was being clever and i i clicked all the skills yeah, drifter is the only um, profession that doesn't use service skill for their training. They use their assignment. All right. Okay, so then I click over pilot. Which uh, small have. craft specifically. Uh huh. Hey, they're teaching me astrogation. The Navy never taught me that. (laughs) Okay. All right. So now, as a drifter, are you going to focus on personal development, service skills, or scavenger skills? Oh. Let's go with personal development. Okay, roll a d6. Four. Uh, you gain language at level zero. Or That's you increase your you increase uh, your language uh, by one. Oh, oh, oh. I just realized by pausing on my turn, I've been put in the Q times. Because Q times just rated with 29 viewers. Oh, hey. hello, you guys. Hello. Thank you for tuning in as we are going to finish. Um, this will probably be our last term for tonight, and we will have to continue character creation going forward because this is our first time playing Traveler. It took us a little while to get through some of our terms. I think we're starting to pick up a rhythm. However, after term four, it starts to become another wrench in the pipeline. All right. So. You're going to increase your language um, by one. So if it was untrained, it goes up to level zero. If you already had it level zero, it goes up to level one, and you get your specialty if language has a specialty. It looks like it does, even though I'm at negative one for language. Why are you at negative? Oh, because you're... Because my education is shit. Oof, oof, oof. Uh... Okay, Uh, so... Do I make my survival roll now? Yes! All right. Pray for me. Oh, God, Varangi, please bless these Fuck! days. <laughs> I rolled a three! Fuck you, God, Oh, Varangi. dexterity? <laughs> yes! You, not only did you score! Not only did you roll a three, you rolled <laughs> double ones. Yay. No. Oh <laughs> Rachel, oh. it was nice knowing you. 
No. Rest in peace. Okay. We just have a misfortunate group of people. No. So that is... All right. She failed being a pirate. <laughs> the pirates wouldn't take me, and I suck as a scavenger. Are you going to die as a scavenger now? <laughs> like, what happens? I... Okay. Luckily, on that roll specifically, a natural two just means a failure, which you've already failed the roll. Um, yeah. There's just no way your bonus would have uh, helped you. Okay. <clears throat> so, just like many of your future traveler mates, you're not having a great term <laughs> right now. You failed to be accepted into a group of pirates. You were drafted. <laughs> you ran. <laughs> You had to take work on a scavenger team out in the asteroid belt. And now, please roll a d6. God. Wow. Don't, don't roll one. Don't. Oh, fuck. Either good or <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. What is it? Five. Right, but what is it? <gasps> All right. <laughs> Yeah. I am betrayed Ouch. by a friend. One of my contacts oh. or allies betrays me, ending my career. They become a rival or an enemy. <laughs> if you have no contacts or allies, then you are still betrayed by someone you never saw coming and still gain <laughs> rival or enemy. In oh, addition, no. roll 2D. If I roll a 2, I have to take the prisoner career my next turn. <laughs> oh, don't roll a 2! Please, RG. Oh, it's an nice. Eight. Okay, that's mm. better. <laughs> you finally rolled well. Oh, oh my gosh. What? So, hi. Do you want a rival or an enemy? What's the difference? Severity <laughs> of how much they hate you? Yeah, I think enemy is more along the lines of just pure hate, where rival is just. Coincidental hate, the they'll fuck you over when the they can, but they don't care. Yeah. I'll take a I'll take a rival because I'm pretty sure we're gonna end this whole character creation with them being my enemy. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Wait, hold Sweet on. Can my enemy be your rival? Can my rival be your rival too? Can we my all hate the same person. Yes, rival? can all three of us hate the same person? <laughs> Collective hate. Okay, hey, I, I like need you. To come, I need you to come up with a way how one person simultaneously is a corrupt cop, a scientist, and a scavenger in a far-off asteroid belt. All right. They work for the, C they so, work for the CIA. So he, here is my proposal. The have you seen? Institute of America. Have you seen Shaun of the Dead? Yes. So there's that one. A uh, scene where Team Sean, they're trying to get to the Winchester and have a pint and wait for it all to blow over. And they walk past their far more competent counterparts. <laughs> yes. So it's not necessarily the same person, but they're all on the same team with each other. <laughs> So we're building your rival crew. Yeah, yes. it's just a rival crew that's slightly better than it. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is great. Oh, I like that. Okay. Yeah. <sighs> Can we blow them up as their first mission? Mm, we'll have to see. Let's get through the rest of our terms first. We're not even over yet. Okay, um, that's mishap. Uh, somehow, Rachel, your character, after being betrayed, gets kicked out of being a drifter. <laughs> I I think it's like, oh god, this area of the uh galaxy or the the solar system is way too hot. I gotta fuck off to somewhere else. Uh, yeah. Need more of that space air we conditioning. Need, yeah, we don't. We don't need Arrakis levels of heat here. Oh, is that what you trying to say? That might be the single greatest term I've seen in this <laughs> game yet. Oh my okay. God, that was fucking amazing. All right, and Dave. Yes. Finish us off for the evening. All right. I decided I am gonna take Scion. 
Oh shit. Okay. I, oh, I DM I messaged you, but I guess you, I, there's been a lot going on. DM'd me? Yeah, I not DM but like in the chat I sent a message to you directly. I did not roll ahead though because I uh didn't quite know what to roll. So I did roll all I did was I rolled my sigh. Okay, so you rolled two d six minus one. Uh, does the minus one for every previous career does the does school count since that wasn't really a actually no that's pre formal career, career. I think it's specifically marked so you're right just two d six. All right, so I got an eleven. Jesus Christ! But okay. so now I have to roll to qualify, right? Um, no, no. So from what I was reading, in my my understanding here. You are approached by an underground, highly illegal psionic group who sense potential in you. You oh, may test right. your psi and attempt to enter the psion career. Okay. So you don't have like they're training you. Like they, you are testing your psi, you're gaining your number, and then you get to make an attempt to enter the career automatically. Okay. That's the benefit of that role. So. All right. So you, testing my psi is a what again? Well, so you've already tested your side. Your side is an 11. Well, I rolled it, but I thought like I had to make a check to. No, no, to no. Get in. So side mean... is like a stat, right? So. Mm -hmm. Well, let's not lollygag on this explanation because they just raided us with a party 14. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. We. Hello are finishing up our first night of Traveler character creation. This is an in-depth and incredibly fun character creation system. Absolutely love it. I hope everyone's enjoying it, even though they know there's some breaks between the action. We're a large group here. No, it's but amazing. this guy, Mr. Twin Dad, is just got accepted into a psionic group, made his psionic test, and has a psi of 11, which gives you a plus one modifier okay. to your psi. So I don't have to qualify because of the thing that happened during my university. Correct. Okay, so I'm going to go, I think I'm going to go well, with wild talent? Actually, okay, sorry. We're saying a couple of different things here all okay. at once. So, you still have to qualify for your career. Okay, so I still have to roll the six plus. Yes. And mm -hmm. I got an 11 total. An 11 total, okay. So I there have qualified go. to get into this career. You have qualified to get into the career. Yeah, just like any other career you try to get into. Same same process. Okay. All right, so. Uh, you're going to do wild talent? I think so. Okay. I think All so. Right. Yeah. So, okay. so I was reading that I get those skills for my assignment. Like, I get all of those at level zero, it says. But then I was also confused because I was reading about, like, I can attempt to test Psy for all of my telepathic potential or my psionic strength or to psionic training. And then, like, I can roll the learning for it. I'm very confused by this. Okay. Just it's also late. Hold on. No, it's you're, fine. Yeah. Right. We're, you're, we're conflating a bunch of stuff all into one thing. And you don't have to do it all at once. Okay. Good. All right. So. Uh, determine. Okay. Learning. Roll D2. A traveler is using psionic power. All right. You're picking wild, wild power mm -hmm. there. Okay. Yeah. Wild talent. So. Wamon says you also roll for individual size skills. Apathy as their first talent. Okay. I don't see anything here saying that your um, basic training is any different from anyone else. So your basic training is going to remain as service skills. 
So, telepathy, clairvoyance, telekinesis, awareness, teleportation, and then any talent is your basic training. So when you get telepathy, Okay. So I was reading on uh, page something, page 229 in the blue box. It says using the Scion career. Yeah. Unlike okay. other careers, the Scion takes skills from the appropriate specialist table instead of the service kills table. There it is. Okay. During basic training. Okay. Excellent. There's the thing I was looking for. Perfect. And the Scion must still roll to acquire talents when they determine their Psy. Must still roll to acquire talents when they determine their Psy. When rolling on the service skill table, if the Scion gains a skill for a talent they do not yet possess, they must attempt to roll. Let's take another roll to learn the talent. Okay, so there's a chart here on page 228. Psionic training. Basically, whenever you um, learn this, um... There's a difficulty to each one. So like telepathy right. is a learning DM of plus four. Right. It's a two test of travel who wish to develop. Um, if it helps, a little side note from yeah. the chat says that the uh, most optimal way to acquire skills with the hardest ones first because they do scale after that. So Right. Because each additional one you're taking negative to the Yeah, like I'm going to go for, I, I'm going to try to learn teleportation first because it's a plus zero. Uh, I think you want to do that the other way around. Mm. No, because for every one I learn, like if I learn teleportation, I get a plus zero modifier. If I then go to awareness, I would get a minus one to learn it, but I would get a plus one to the learning DM to my die roll, so it would offset. Oh, I see. That's a plus. Yeah. So basically, if I, I learn teleportation yes. and go up the way, I Got should it. equal out to almost a zero on all of the rolls. Yep. Yep. That but I don't know. Sense. I don't know what I'm test. Like, am I testing against my own size score? Yes. Because it seems like the more power, higher your size score, then the harder it is. To learn powers, which doesn't seem to make sense to me. Um, okay, sorry, you're not testing against your own size score. Okay. Um, let's see. Telepathy as their first talent, you gain automatically. Chooses telepathy as their first talent, you can automatically, no need to roll. Next. Yeah, I guess my thing is I'm just trying to figure out what the what the number is. What the I've, number is to test against? Is well, it the, the generic number the generic for... one is eight. For any for any test, generic average is eight. Okay. Um, so let me see. It is a three for a total of six less than the number she needs? Yeah. She now rolls the determined talent. She can select. She begins with. I mean, we can do this offline. I know it's late. Okay. Like this part to figure it out rather than. Yeah, apologies, everybody. This for... was not. Yeah. This is. Uh, yeah, Traveler with. Uh... So, yeah, does anyone know at the top of their head exactly what the. In chat, what the. You roll Psy against target difficulty that each Psy skill has associated with it. Human. Human. Come oh. on. Uh, no, you roll Psy against target difficulty plus modifier that each Psy skill has associated with it. Right, we're trying to figure out what that target difficulty is because before the modifier, because we can see the chart here that says, like, telepathy, or like, teleportation has a plus zero difficulty modifier. Okay, so... Or, or dice modifier, at... dice, dice modifier. So I'm looking at telekinesis. The average, the check to activate telekinesis is an eight plus. For clairvoyance, for tactical awareness, I see, like I'm looking at the actual powers. Mm -hmm. Like I saw one for just basic telekinesis, but like I don't see a basic one for telepathy. So that's why I was like, okay, like 
telekinesis, I can understand, like, it's an 8 plus, because it calls it out in the book. Uh, Taman says there should be a learning modifier for each power. Right, and um, we, we see the learning modifier. What we're looking for is what's the target number to test against. Like, what's the check number that we that I need to roll for to learn the actual power? Because, like I said, in telekinesis, I see to activate, like, basic telekinesis, it's an 8+. plus. But other powers don't have that. Like, telepathy, I don't see a... Uh, root like a check number for it. Uh, base difficulty plus learning modifier is the answer. Base right, difficulty but... is eight. Okay. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. So we got it. Thank you so much. Thank you, chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was. Very, very helpful. That was. I appreciate you all so much. And for your patience as well, because again, this is our first time delving into Traveler. So I'm really enjoying it. Just that was throwing me off just a little bit. So thank you all yes, thank very you. much for that. So, um, you know, yeah, so we'll say eight. So, all right. Okay. So for basic training. So I'm going to get the skills under the wild talent. And then I need to roll to get all of my powers. Mm -hmm. Which for those rolls, since it is seven after one, we'll do yeah. all of those rolls um, offline. We'll come back next week and we will tell you what um, the psionic looks like and you know how his life is going to go forward from there. Um, so it is getting a little late for us on the East Coast. Because we're all on the East Coast, right? Yeah. In real time. America time. Did you want to save coast is my best coast? <laughs> exactly. We do need to get through Ambrose. Uh, so uh, we can save it for the next nope. session. Nope. We're gonna Me, finish everyone's if, turn too. So Dave, I was gonna say, go ahead. I'll yeah, I can do my rolling for stuff, but get to Amber so Ambrose can do yep. the goodest uh, space boy. I love it. Yes. So, Ambrose, what did you decide to do as your career? Oh, Jesus. Fuck. Um. <laughs> Tiny text. Tiny tablet. I just had a laugh. I was looking at Star Marine because, you know, go to spoil Star. Anyway. Let's go Scholar Field Researcher. Okay. All right. So to do Scholar, excellent. Let's go ahead and roll uh, your intelligence, please, to qualify. <laughs> Five. Oh, no. Incredible. So, having flunked out of school due to your massive amount of partying, you apply for scholar uh, field researcher positions, and you get turned down every step of the way. They're not going to take you. Not, not with no degree. What if I give them the puppy eyes? They don't care. They want that paper. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I, 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 I presume that I saw your puppy eyes and... So, uh, uh, so, the question to you, Ambrose, as you also, not having any sort of job, get put to the top of the draft list, are you going to answer a draft summon, or are you going to run and be a drifter? I'm going to be the goodest of the goodest boys. The goodest of the goodest of the goodest, sir. <laughs> Perfect. You... Drafted into the Navy. Oh, good. I love swimming. Not that Navy. What oh, good. I love the color you know. blue. So, you are drafted in the Navy. You are brought in. Uh, 
Uh, All right. So, you are brought to the Navy. Are you going to um, agree to the assignment of line crew, engineer gunner, or flight? Engineer. Engineer gunner. Perfect. You serve as a specialist technician on a starship. All right, um, this is your first career because you went to university from before. So you are going to gain the following skills um, at level zero. So these following skills become trained for you. Ready? I think so, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Pilot. Pilot here, pilot there, got it. Vac suit. Okay. Athletics. <gasps> Remember, so you are- if you already have this at level zero, it does not increase. Okay. No, I did yeah. not have any of those. Okay, perfect. Uh, gunner. Okay. Mechanic. Oh, I already had that. Okay, then no benefit. And gun combat. <gasps> I don't like to combat. All right. Well, they're going to teach you to shoot anyway. All right. So you gain all of those at level zero. Okay. For the next four years, are you going to focus on personal development, additional service skills, those are your generic skills, or engineering and gunner skills? Obviously, personal development, because I am clearly not the goodest boy. Okay. Personal development. Please roll a d6 as you attempt to become more of the goodest boy. Five. Five. Your education increases by one. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what I needed. A 12 in education. And learn the pants off somebody. <laughs> okay. I'm smart so, dog. No one said I was. Very, very, very educated dog. Not necessarily. Yes, that's why you good as boy. That's why you good as boy. All right. My education's a 12. My intellect is a 7. All right. So, as an engineer so very, and a gunner, I need you to roll me an intelligence roll, please. So you're very book smart. You just lack a lot of common sense. Is that what we're. But you know a lot of facts. Like 10. A lot of facts. 10. Nice. With a 10 in intelligence for an engineer gunner, you have no mishaps. You get through your you get through this term with no problems at all. Congratulations. Why am I good at shooting? No, you're good at engineering or gunning. Okay. <laughs> I mean, gunners are defend ships too. They don't like attack ships just so, as a baseline. With that. That was it, your survival. Now I need you to roll me 1d6 on your life events. Can I also nope, ask sorry. how those are rolled? 2d6, apologies. 2d6. How, how what is rolled? Uh, so, like, I should roll for my life event still. Yeah, right? I for figured Zion. we would just go over your whole... Okay, that's term. fine. Yeah. <sighs> We're going to have to dive into that. <sighs> Roll it. All right, 2d6, here we go. Uh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Show yeah. me three. I pass. Where? There's no passing, it's just 2d6. I need the number. No, I, I mean, I passed my turn, it's okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not allowed. I mean, oh. good try. A four? Four. Why are you afraid of a four? Because it's always been bad. Oh. You are given a special assignment or duty on board your ship. A duty. And you're a dog. <laughs> you, made a, you have a special duty on the ship. <laughs> Gain dice modifier. Gain dice modifier plus one to any one benefit roll. So when you ultimately leave um, <coughs> here, you'll get a plus one to a benefit roll. Oh, where? So make sure how? you 
Just put a note that you have a plus one benefit oh, okay. roll. Yep. I get a Benny. Yeah. Eggs, Benny? Mm, sounds good. It does. All right. I like crab benedicts. Is there any way that you could connect this to any of your other travelers? You had this special detail on board this ship. Uh, was anyone else in the Navy during this time? I mean, no, but no. it was before. I think we all, like, you, you most had of two us people took that were Navy, but most of us went around. around yeah. Well, okay, so, and such. All right, so Dave is off being a psychic. Rachel <laughs> is... Failing at being a drifter after failing yep. at being a uh, rogue. Okay. Devin, you're doing science. Yes. What kind of science are you focused on? Uh, I'm a physician. A physician. Okay. Real okay. quick. Yeah. Maybe I'm the bad guy because I've mind controlled all these people that have become the party, the other travelers' rivals. Well, I've I've already determined that we're basically your cover. Like, you're with us because you need somebody to play down the fact that you're actually super special psychic. Um, He's the SSP. Okay, physician. Interesting. Keens, you were in the Merchant Marines and your ship got blowed up, correct? Blowed that it did uh, okay. <gasps> maybe we rescued you and that was part of my mission and i was like hey i know you we got drunk in college <laughs> i like it <laughs> let's do it okay so uh you were the only survivor of your merchant marine ship Keems. uh mm. you took a small shuttlecraft um you were able to survive on a lifeboat you were eventually picked up um on the ship uh, in which Ambrose's character was present and reconnected. Definitely need to have a villain arc after that. <laughs> we'll see. All right. Excellent. That was that. Now you need to roll your advancement. Um, are you able to advance in your career? You are an engineer gunner. Please roll education. Eleven. Eleven. You oh, but that's without my modifier. You have a twelve. So you have a huge modifier. Yeah. You're the smart one. We got thirteen total. <laughs> Is, does Ambrose just win now? Is it good as uh, to just win the game? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Yes. All right. Glad we're on the same page. A traveler who succeeds at a commission role becomes a rank one officer in that career and progresses on the officer's rank table from then on. Trying for a commission is, opt is optional. You may only attempt to gain a commission in your first term unless your uh, society is nine or higher, in which case you may try for a commission in any term. However, there is a uh, negative that applies, not for you. Some events give a bonus DM Blah, blah blah blah. If you gain a commission, you may not roll for mm -hmm. advancement in the same term. So, you in the Navy rolled for commission, succeeded, which means you are now no longer a rank zero crewman, you are a rank one ensign. Nice. Which means your melee blade skill goes up to level one. Hell you melee blade skill? Mm -hmm. You have a saber. Yes. Where does melee yes. need a specialty? Yes, melee oh, has specialties, yes. Good to know. That's one of my skills. Oh, yep. so I need do I need to create a thing? Um, yeah, cause... we'll we'll mark it in. You just 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 uh, give yourself melee. Oh, melee. I found it. I found it. Oh, perfect. I got it. Thank you. All right, excellent. Um, 
My final question to you, Ambrose. Well, first off, increase your age by four years. Everyone should be 26 years old. Okay? Are you going to stay in the Navy? Or are you going to leave after four years? You've done very well for yourself. You've I have been the goodest empty. boy, and I will keep being the goodest boy. Okay. But do you want to be the goodest boy in the Navy? Yes, yes. because I must be goodest at something. Fair. All right. So when we come back for term three, how life works. When we come back for term three, you are in the Navy. You don't have to qualify. You're just going to go through that again and continue to advance. Okay. No mustering out because yeah. you are not retiring. You're going to bank that for later. No issues there. Should you go to continue the same? If so, go back, start your term, your term, boom, term two's over. Only way I do is we got to do Dave's term two, which we're going to do offline. Everyone else currently in term three. So we'll continue to develop these characters and all of these in Traveler. Core Rulebook Update 2022 from Mongoose Publishing next week here on Vorpal Tales. Go ahead and pull one out my outro us, here. If one of us doesn't die, I will be upset. Well, we're going to really dig into that next time because we're going to start busting through these terms as we go forward. I think we're all starting to kind of get a rule for how this works. Um, yeah. So yes. like one of my red lines in the consent form is animal harm. So mine and Akima's <laughs> characters can't die. They're not oh. animals. Ah! I tried. We're I tried Animal Akima. adjacent. <laughs> you walk feel- on two legs, you talk. You have jobs. I I feel like this is real rules lawyer right now. Role play over role play? (laughs) (laughs) Wait. Well done, I give up arguments. (laughs) Ambrose, you you, you now count as a dog with job. Well, that's it for our adventure and character creation this evening. Why is Ambrose turning so red? Sorry. If this character creation of galactic adventure grabbed your interest, please follow Vorpal Tales on social media to discover your next awesome adventure or your terrifying tale. You can also find us at vorpaltales.com for calendars, retellings, and more. Also, if you liked our roleplay, uh, which we didn't really do, but we started to develop ca- like, you know, connections and things like that. We, we were already getting a, a party here. I like it. Um, If you liked all of that, please consider checking out our Patreon, which has several tiers of exclusive games coming soon, including a D&D campaign featuring Wild Beyond Beyond the Witchlight, Call Mm. of Cthulhu Horror on the Orient Express, in which I have already died. Tune in to see how that happened. Um, Players, it's been a pleasure starting to create these characters with you this evening. Uh, Please remind those at home of your name, your online handle, and where they might find you online, and cool stuff that you do. Oh, hey, it me, the goodest space boy. You can find me all over the internet as Am Changeling, because it me, the goodest space boy. You can also find me on Etsy, Thornkind, as the goodest space boy. And you can find me playing <laughs> Sunday evening uh, in Virtual Horror Con. Uh, don't go in, don't don't walk into Winter Woods. Yes, that's it, and it is titled Micophile. Good job, goodest space boy. Uh, hello, all. Goodbye, all. I am Devin. You can find me online at Sword of Sullied, and I have been failing at being a physician. Just Hi, every- don't let me operate on you. Probably will leave scissors in your stomach. I mean, who knows about that? It was only one time. Yeah, my point is proven. Hi, everybody. My name is Keems, and you can find me on the interweb at It's Me Keems. Um, and yeah, yeah, tonight was really fun. Oh, I thought I thought you were going to roll out with some more shade for Devin there. Uh, all right. I'll I didn't my bring turn. my umbrella. Sorry. Uh, yeah. It's actually stuck in another person. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Uh, my name is John, otherwise known as J3 Billion. Uh, it has been a hot minute, so I appreciate y'all. Um, 
yeah, I am figuring out what I'm going to do. So hashtag soon.tm figure out do stuff doing stuff don't know yet so bye hello everyone my name is rachel you can catch me stolen fires pretty much everywhere uh i will be at virtual horicon this sunday night uh same show as ambrose that's gonna be a lot of fun and then i will be back here on monday for uh delta green uh looking forward to that uh at some point, I will be running a thing on Vorpal. Uh, currently, we are in the process of recording Call of Cthulhu Horror on the Orient Express. We are halfway through uh, the uh, Blood Red Fez. Uh, those should be dropping soon. I know it's been super delayed. Um, the uh, It's a lot harder to edit than anyone anticipated. Fair enough. But it will be coming soon. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Hashtag .tm. Copyright. Boom. There. And it's me. Right. Okay. Uh, hey, I'm Dave, aka Twin Dead Tweets on the Bird app. And you can catch me next here on Vorpal Tales on Monday night for Curse of Sonia, Curse of Strahd, uh, Gender Bit. <laughs> I am also totally not a vampire, and neither is Ambrose. Yeah. Absolutely not. Suspicious <laughs> You perfect <forget>. denial. <laughs> you forgot. And my name is Steve. I've been the referee for this oh. evening. You can find me on the internet at, at Voodoo Arcade. My pronouns are he, him. And you can find me all over Vorpal Tales, uh, usually on Sundays, but I believe that there is no Sunday night game this weekend due to virtual horror con which means next time you'll see me maybe wednesday we should be beginning gi joe but there's a little bit of a question mark on that now i can't say anything more um but we're gonna figure that out um possibly very exciting news we'll see um and um yeah tune in next friday for continuation of character creation of traveling and um you know we'll finish this up and we'll actually get into the traveling uh so i'm excited uh, thank you everyone for watching. We cannot thank you enough. Um, thank you for staying up with us for this epic space adventure. And with that, remember to always keep your ship fueled, watch your credits, and if you flunk out of Naval Academy, make sure you dodge the draft, <laughs> join up with a scavenger crew, get betrayed, and end up on the run. I'm taking this personally, Steve. <laughs> Safe journeys, everyone. Good night. Night. You have officially pissed off God. <laughs> <laughs>